forever. Dog. Welcome to Public Domain Theater with Kelly Nugent, Lindsay K. Tai, and guest Nick Wagger. Reading Adolescence Only by Irving Cox I Jr. I fucking knew it. Welcome to Public Domain Theater, the podcast of highbrow readings and lowbrow commentary. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay Katai. I'm another one of your hosts, Callie Nugent. And as said, we have with us a writer on I Love You America with Sarah Silverman on Hulu and one of the hosts of Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. It's comedian writer Nick Weiger. Hi. Wee! Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for bringing me back. Oh, Thank you course. for coming back. It's a our d- very last one. I, I know. It's a, it's my dream, ending a podcast. Yeah. You, guys, you guys are living it. Yeah. I'm, I'm very jealous. It, um, you, get to, you get to experience it. And right. we feel so free, except we still have our other show. So we're not totally free. Yeah. <laughs> right. and, and that one is way more work. Right. Yeah, much but, more work. We picked yeah. the one that required no prep to yeah. keep. Yeah. I mean, to get rid of. That's I mean, that's that's kind of the, you know, one of the joys of this show in particular. It is just like you kind of you go in blind by definition. So you you don't have to do any work in advance, really. Um, But, yeah, it's it's. It's been very fun to guest on, and I hope you. I you know I, I think you do have. I think you've said you do have plans to keep doing some version of yeah, this. We'll yeah, we'll do an episode now and then on our Teen Creeps Patreon. There which, you go. Like we came up with this show to put on the Teen Creeps mm-hmm. Patreon, right? Um, and we'll be doing live shows with it now and then, which you did the you did live well. show with us. A real hoot. That was a blast. That was very was fun. Hoot. With our friend Mary Holland. Wait, wait that was, what the hell? What, that fucking story sucked. What was it? Was it was sucked. Yeah. It was about playing so, Pinochle or some shit. No, it was, it was um, backgammon. So, oh, uh, yeah, a guy dirty sneaking back, off to play. Backgammon boy. Oh, it wasn't no, backgammon, it was, but. It, no, it was he, le- he, had, he, he lay ahead a tobacco pipe that's that he what wanted it was. to he smoke. Secretly yes. smoked. He and secretly smoked. He was dressing up as like another guy and like going to another apartment he rented to smoke this pipe and his like wife thought that what like try, was trying to figure out what elaborate double life he was leading it was just that it was just this sort of there's like an O. Henry story but without any of the fun yes just yeah. like this twist ending that just yeah. was not satisfying at all with zero stakes yeah. can you like, imagine what? if you were like trying to figure out where husband's like running around on you and you're like I'm gonna find this fucker in the act and then you just find out he's smoking cigarettes alone in a room in a costume. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, what are you, a serial killer? Yeah. yeah, I'd be like, I'm worried. Yeah. I'm worried and we need to talk about this, you. I would be less upset if you were cheating on me. Please, <laughs> please, because the, it's so ominous. This is right. disturbing. It's so yeah. ominous. Um, um, but the author of that story, I think it was Paul de Kock. Yeah. Paul de Kock. I, I was, I'm reading Les Mis which is taking me a while because it's like uh, it takes like 30 hours to read. Um, I'm 62 percent of the way through. Girl, but, good job. Wow. Thank you, guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. But he gets name checked in Paul Les Mis. Cock? I think. Lindsay, I don't think so. I do think so. I think you're reading the version that's like uh, compiled by Paul DeCock. <laughs> no. <laughs> he just Wait, inserted himself It's translated by Paul DeCock. Yeah. Les Mis by Paul DeCock. <laughs> <laughs> um, so horrifying. I am shocked but not shocked that we are revisiting Irving Cox Jr. I absolutely thought that that's what was going to happen. Brett... <laughs> Eagle ear sitting off to the side. <laughs> we'll remember. Alec is, is engineering, and Brett is sitting in an office chair in the corner. He brought in an like there he, are other chairs. There's in here. another chair. But he was like, Prince Brett does not abide <laughs> sitting in a hard chair. And when I asked where he was, he told me to shut up. He, he literally did say shut up. He I said shut up. Here's the thing. Brett just came back from a cruise. He feels different. <laughs> he. Is a man of the ocean now. He yes. he's he's visited he all you can eat. Has been transformed by the sea. I've yeah. noticed that because you know he kind of normally has a subdued wardrobe, but yes. he's wearing like a like head to toe Tommy Bahama. Yes. It's really yeah. weird. And yeah. he came in and said, "Call me Tommy Bahama," and we all said, "No, why?" <laughs> and then he said, "Shut up." Yeah, and so that he's told me to shut up twice now. Twice. Yeah, yeah. And the and chair like, is also eight eight feet. Up. The chair it's is tall. eight feet up. It's tall. Gotta, it's like a. You know what? I'm realizing now. It's it must have been the cruise. It's a lifeguard tower. Yeah. He, he yeah. brought a, he brought oh, a lifeguard what? tower in here. Yeah, yeah, that's not a chair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got like a. He's got. He has a whistle. What yeah. do you think's gonna happen? 
I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that he's ready to jump in and give mouth to mouth to whichever of us looks like they're drowning. So oh, just boy. yeah, everybody keep it together. Yeah. Make sure it's clear that we're still we're breathing. We're fine. He keeps screaming, free swim. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, there's no water. No. It's not. It's good that he's high enough up that the mics aren't picking that up. Because no, it, thank God. I, yeah. We're, we're going to power through it, but he's yelling yeah. free swim he's frequently. Very His loud. face is so red. Yeah. Which is like crazy that we can't hear. Because he had to punch a hole in the yeah. ceiling yeah. to the office above mm. us it's, and up there it's like a law firm that helps like immigrants yeah, yeah. it's like a, it's yeah. like he's like at a no-profit law firm he's ruining his head is like just a, poking up yeah. in there There's and some... it's right next next to the haberdasher <laughs> oh the haberdasher yeah. the haberdashery yeah. yeah yeah but you know what he's a great guy he is our uh, producer he is our so producer we put up with it we do put up with it um, I think I, I'm starting to understand why you're ending this show. This yeah. seems like this is this, this is, is a, a huge no, problem. it's weekly. We there's didn't like, say there's like a new look and a new personality right. every time. There was that week when Oscar was on the podcast yes. and he was wearing a ski jacket and aviator glasses yes. Yes. and uh, go go boots, go go boots, I think, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you Bizarre. know what? I, I hope that he finds who he is soon. Because, mm-hmm. um, like, frankly, I don't have the energy. Right. No. Um, so God bless him. Uh, mm-hmm. Go with God. Go with God and um, save some lives out there. Uh, we are reading Adolescents Only. Which, I'm d- not comfortable with that title in yeah. the least. Hey, but the cover image is a stock photo from what I'm seeing from the uh, <laughs> from from the copyright information. <laughs> cover image, stock photo ink. <laughs> Oh, great. I, I feel like if I download Adolescence only to my Kindle, then my Amazon account is like flagged by the Department of Justice. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Except that they're not in operation because of the shutdown. Yeah. So you're off the hook. Wee! Thank God. <laughs> Thanks, Pelosi. <laughs> oh. This takes a weird turn. <laughs> no, yeah. like, wait a minute. It's like, uh, yeah. Um, Pelosi. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Quick, just read the story. Read the story. It's the last <laughs> one. Everybody in Scott Jr. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. (laughs) All right. Ready? Uh Uh-huh. I'm ready. Elvin wasn't sure how it had started. Maybe it was the Shermerhorn twins or the mysterious meteorite or else the world had gone crazy. He tried to convince himself that he had no right to gripe. It was a pleasant place to live. He had privacy and a bath of his own. Ooh, a bath. The Shermerhorns were reasonably broad-minded people. They never objected to his smoking or an occasional glass of beer. Last year at the New Havens, Gary Elvin cringed inwardly at the recollection. Just the same. This is going too far. It was enough to endure their kids all day long, five days of the week, without the addition of these juvenile parties. This one had started an hour after dinner, and it was still going strong when Elvin returned from the late show at the Fox. The sounds of adolescent orgasms drifted. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the next set. Here There's we go. sex parties. Naturally, the Shermerhorn twins were popular 10th graders, husky, blonde Greek gods who had oh everything. My God. <laughs> boy. Oh, boy. Including a red convertible and a swimming pool Pop Shermerhorn had built for them at the ranch. Oh, <laughs> so many surprises. Is he, is he renting a room at a ranch? <laughs> is it the bunny ranch? <laughs> Gary Elvin had expected a certain number of parties when he decided to board and room with the Shermerhorns. Mm, there you go. But hardly one every weekend. He fled through the cluttered hall where a buxom lass was no. organizing something no. called a bubblegum Inc- contest. Wrong. <laughs> Bad. Oh, boy. No. How, I just, a bubblegum contest. <laughs> I'm worried about the age range of this buxom lass. Yeah, I'm worried. I'm going to say 14. Yeah, 14. They, they've, we've already specified these two gods or 10th <laughs> <or tenth> graders. <laughs> At the prime age of 15. <laughs> uh, so she's doing the bubblegum contest. He took <laughs> refuge on the damp and deserted patio. He flung himself on a wet canvas lounge Ew. and looked up at the bright night sky. Bitterly, he counted off the weeks. It was still early in November. He had eight more months to endure before June came with its temporary illusion of escape. As he always did, Elvin resolved to find a better job next year. He had been teaching for five years now. He's a teacher. Great. I'm oh, so boy, glad okay. that. Oh, I'm so glad that somebody <laughs> who looks at two 10th graders and is like, they're practically gods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uses the word buxom, buxom in relation to a young woman. He knew all the tricks of classroom control and smooth community relations. Ew, no. Surely if he started looking early enough, he ought to get something at a small college. 
Suddenly, better. <laughs> he was jerked back to reality by a curious spot of red that appeared in the sky. It moved closer and he saw that it was a falling object followed by a long plume of red flame. What? What on earth? <laughs> It's the meteorite. (laughs) It moved closer. Oh, I'm sorry. I already said that. It flashed momentarily overhead and Elvin heard a dull thud as it fell into a field beyond the ranch house. He sprang up from the couch and moved off in the darkness. It had been a meteorite, of course. If it had survived the friction of the atmosphere, it would make an interesting exhibit for the science classroom. (laughs) Miss Gherkin would be glassy eyed with pleasure. (laughs) <laughs> that nubile young <laughs> Miss Gherkin. Miss Gherkin. Not a teacher. <laughs> She's a ninth grader. Yeah. Oh, Her first name is Miss. <laughs> <laughs> there was no moon. I oh, I guess that night? Mm. As soon as he crossed the driveway, Elvin stumbled over the damp furrows of a n- newly plowed field. He Ew. was sweating when he reached the row of palms that lined the irrigation dis- dish. He paused to wipe his face. And he heard a weird, shrill, rhythmic sound. It might have been called music, but there was no definable melody or beat. It was faint at first. But as he moved to the right, paralleling the ditch, the sound came louder. Then beyond the trees, in a glow of blue light emanating from the thing itself, he saw the rocket. It was not five feet long. What? It was not quite five feet long. (laughs) A slim projectile of glowing metal nosed deeply into the soft earth. The four fins were rotating slowly. Gary Elvin might quite properly, have been frightened, but he was totally unacquainted with modern fiction dealing with the probable potentials of science and the universes I'm beyond sorry. the Earth. What? So like, he doesn't just read because sci-fi? you haven't read sci-fi, you're like, this seems normal. Yeah, yeah he doesn't know to be scared. Just like... <laughs> right. Like, as far as I know, I've never read a story where this didn't happen, so... <laughs> Such material he classified, along with comic books and television, as the pap of mediocre minds. Oh, this guy's a this guy's a frowns upon genre fiction. Yeah, That's the issue. He's a, okay, he's a purist. Yeah, he's a snob. He's like I saw a guy on Twitter who's like, man, we'd be really fucked in World War Two now because all the guys who are supposed to be fighting would just be at home playing with their dolls. I was like, or yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> or like, half of you are Nazis now. Yeah, right. Irving R. Cox would be the guy complaining about su- like he, that that Twitter thread that was talking about how bad superhero movies are and yeah. how he could do without yeah. them. He'd be that guy now. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. It's so immature. Stop watching superhero movies. Stop reading comic books. Stop playing video games and get back to ogling teens. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're buxom. They're Adonises. They're nubile and they're 14. Let's get back to staring. Different jurisdictions have different ages of consent. Let's not judge based on the age of 18. It's just a number. You can get married at 14. You can get married at 14 with consent of the parents and some parents allow it. I made a website counting down the days till Miss Gherkin turns 18. (laughs) (laughs) Now, when he first saw the rocket, he came to the somewhat prosaic conclusion that it had strayed from the government experimental site at Muroc. Huh? Okay. He walked closer. The glow of the metal brightened. The slow rotation of the fins and the weird music became hypnotic. For a moment, Elvin felt a surge of fear. He tried to turn away, but he could not. Instead, moving against his will, he took two of the fins in his hands and pulled on them? The rotation of the music stopped as the tailpiece of the rocket fell open. Elvin's mind cleared as he looked into a tiny chamber capped by a small rectangular piece of metal, which was dotted with tiny globes of a translucent material. Gingerly, he picked up the seal. As he touched the metal, a strange sensation, like a flood of jumbled words, tumbled through his mind. The feeling was neither unpleasant nor frightening. He was tempted to relax and enjoy it, as he would have, if he had not been distracted by a second object in the chamber. He thrust the strip of metal into the pocket of his coat. Elvin's second find was a small, transparent cylinder filled with tiny, multicolored spheres, exactly like a jar of hard candy. This it is the was fucking... a jar of hard candy. <laughs> this is the least interesting <laughs> UFO encounter ever. This guy goes in, inside some sort of crashed spaceship, and there's a like a metal rectangle and a sphere, or like a bunch of spheres inside a jar. He's like, like what the fuck? Oh, some like, jawbreakers, oh, some hard candy. Box. What's further inside? Ooh, a grandmother. <laughs> There was nothing else in the rocket, except for the motor (laughs) built into the tailpiece. The blue glow of the rocket began to fade. 
Vaguely, Elvin became aware that something was amiss. He began oh, to suspect now. <laughs> that he had stumbled upon something more than a stray rocket from Muroc. He wanted what? to tell somebody about it. Elvin is dumb. He's, he's dumb. Just, he's just dumb. Clutching the cylinder of colored balls, he ran to the house. <laughs> teenagers, teenagers. Teenagers, I found some candy. Candy. <laughs> <laughs> The party had reached one of its numerous climaxes. Nice. The hall was jammed with chattering high school students. They yeah, was. swirled in a flood around Mrs. Shermerhorn, who seemed to be enjoying herself as much as they were. Gross, Mrs. Shermerhorn. Gary Elvin grabbed her arm. I found a rocket! <laughs> he cried. I like knowing what he sounds like now. Yeah. <laughs> rocket? She frowned for a moment and then smiled brightly. Oh, the racket. Yes, but they do have so much energy, don't they? He held up the cylinder. This was in it. <laughs> oh, you found it, Mr. Elvin. We looked high and low. Now what? we It was in the rocket. Now we have our contest. Desperately, a new idea occurred to him. No one in this story has an IQ above seven. <laughs> yeah. Everyone Everybody. is just an idiot. But, like, very happy for yeah. it. So, so, yeah. happy. so yeah. happy. Yeah. Like, oh, good. Now we can have a contest where everybody guesses how many hard candies are in your space jar. Yeah. <laughs> Desperately, a new idea occurred to him. Can you get these kids quiet? I want to phone. <laughs> Do you want to phone? What? But it's so early, Mr. Elvin. Does anyone Elvin. want to phone with me? <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we can't expect them to go home yet. No, Mrs. Shermerhorn. Phone. I want to telephone. Oh, no. It's Corpse Bill Clinton again. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was uh, like, we've done Bill this Clinton. voice on this podcast before. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. We'll have our contest in the living room. Gary Elvin wormed his way toward the closet under the stairway. It was a very small telephone alcove, not designed for utility, yet he found he could shut out some of the din if he jackknifed himself against the slanting wall and held the door partly shut. What? <laughs> so he's like... <laughs> he he's splits? like, these Americans are too loud. And and he, how do you jackknife yourself? So he's... <laughs> he's just like pinned. What is? I, yeah. What, what's a jackknife? I think it's I, you. You're you like folding your body in straight. half. Oh, okay. I have a different oh, idea oh. of what it is. Oh no, I think you're right. You do fold your. So he's like, he's like touching his toes, <laughs> folding himself up, and then he like bumps it with his butt open. He like I don't closes understand. Closes the door with the butt. He's okay. holding the door. All right. But it required use of both of his hands. He set the cylinder on a bookcase in the hall and squeezed into the closet. Bad move. That cylinder is gone. With the telephone in his hand, he hesitated. It had seemed a good idea a moment ago to call the authorities, but to bring the generalization down to specifics, just who would that be? In a big city, he would have telephoned the police. But San Benedicto was a California <laughs> Valley town. Small, sleepy, and contented. The four-man police force. I think there are force, still authorities. Yeah, well, there's four of them. More or less capable of handling minor traffic violations, but certainly nothing else. The state police? Elvin doubted that they would have jurisdiction. <laughs> the president? <laughs> God? <laughs> Excuse me, White House. <laughs> this feels like an element of his internal monologue that we don't need to dwell on. No. Like, Do we need to go step by step through him reasoning over who to call specifically? We could no. just have him call. He could just call. Like he just makes a phone call to somebody. But there are things like word counts, Nick. Yeah, yeah. I got gotcha, you. Right. <laughs> need to get to mm, that. True, true. His last feeble resort seemed to be the San Benedicto News, a daily four-page advertising circular that passed locally for a newspaper. Oh, boy. Elvin called the editor reporter at his home. Circular. Oh, he has a home phone what? number. What? After he told this story, Elvin had to suffer a certain standardized banter concerning the advisability of changing his brand of bourbon. It was entirely meaningless, a form of humor enjoyed by the Valley people. Matt Henderson. What, what is this town? <laughs> This is, so, is he, this like he Ohio? Calls, <laughs> what is this place? He, he calls, he's like, hi, editor of the advertising circular. I have a rocket ship I'd like to report. Well, before I can do that, which brand of bourbon do you like? I like Four Roses, but do you like Baker's Mark? No, I think what he did was like, extra, extra. Are you at your home, editor? I have some news. <laughs> And then he's like, I found a rocket with candy. And then the guy was like, you better change your brand of bourbon, if you know what I mean. He's like, ha ha, valley humor. 
I think oh, that's what happened. Oh, he was saying basically like you're like you're you, drunk. Yeah, it's like you're seeing pink elephants. Yeah. Oh. I see what's going on. Oh, yes. see, still stupidly, I was like, Kelly, you said the exact thing I just said, but in a different <laughs> voice. <laughs> well, that helped me understand it. Mm. And you helped me understand it. Yeah, there we go. It's like the, a chain. Yeah. Matt Henderson eventually agreed that the strange rocket might bear investigation. I'll be out first thing in the morning, he promised. In the morning? Listen, Matt, this thing may be... It might... He was unable to crystallize his reasons for urgency. I'm afraid that it'll be gone in a cloud of teens fucking... (laughs) We got to tell the uh, the cabal of pudding brained morons <laughs> in this town that I found a rocket with nothing interesting inside. He finished lamely. It's important, I think. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how a dumb guy talks. Yeah. Um, I can't exactly, but sensing feel important. Whoa, buddy, it ain't gonna run away, is it? No, maybe. But then we can both <laughs> get a good night's rocket. sleep. It might. We don't know it's what rockets a candy can do. Rocket. It's true. Gary Elvin turned away from the telephone, vaguely dissatisfied. He felt that something ought to be done immediately. What he didn't know or why, he went to his cylinder of colored spheres from the bookcase where he had left it. The jar was gone. Of course. Oh, no. Probably he- pinched by some shirtless hunk of a team. <laughs> <laughs> Drenched Probably with perspiration. Being held in his pocket, although how he got it in there with those tight jeans is beyond me. <laughs> the jar pressed Practically against his a second skin. Nubile breast. <laughs> he heard a burst of talk in the living room and he was suddenly frightened. <gasps> From the archway, he looked in <laughs> on the guests. Some 30 youngsters, all the 10th grade of San Benedicto High School nights. Oh, they're all in the 10th grade. They sprawled over chairs and couches. Or they sat, Indian fashion, racist, on the floor. Mrs. Shermerhorn stood in the center of a room, like the judge, smiling patiently. <gasps> duck, duck, goose. Uh oh. All thirty of the guests were chewing industriously. On the floor stood Elvin's jar of colored spheres, open and more than half empty. Oh dear," said Mrs. Germ- Shermerhorn, protested, turning to Elvin. "Something seems wrong with their gum. They've tried and tried, but I haven't seen a single bubble. And it did seem such a clever game." Suppose if the gum were the game, everybody Everybody chew chew gum gum? at the same time, and the first person to blow a bubble wins. That is these fucking valley people. That game sounds like a game that someone would make up to try to trap someone in their house. It's like, why don't we play a game that is my favorite? Um, (laughs) Who can chew the gum? (laughs) Get a mystery jar. We're just gonna take one piece out of it and just sort of see what happens. Mm -hmm. This is like go ask. No, it's not acid. Yep. Where it's like like mine, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> great minds and like man. But the cool thing about it is that this space gum turns them all eighteen. Nice, yeah. but they look the same. Yeah, just, but they look just the changes same. their age. But it's legally. like it's still legal. And mm. also, they can never wear shoes again. Like wait, what? <laughs> this guy's in a feet. Oh no! <laughs> the, her voice trailed off when she saw the horror on Elvin's face. Wordlessly, he pointed at the open jar. <laughs> the room fell silent. All 30 of the youngsters looked at him. Their chomping jaws became motionless. Is, is that mine? He whispered yes, hoarsely. What the idiot? fuck do you think? The jar you brought in? Mrs. Shermerhorn asked. I don't know, Mr. Elvin, I'm sure. Mabel Travis was supposed to bring the gum for the contest and she forgot where... You saw him bring it in and you were excited about seeing it. You know it's his. Valley people are stupid. Wait, hold on. That someone was supposed to bring gum for a contest? Yeah. Where it really was like a bubble contest. Blowing contest oh, maybe? Okay. Yeah. All right. So they thought he had brought gum because Mabel didn't bring the gum. Right. And mm-hmm. they were like, oh, good. The gum. Yeah. Now we can have the contest. Yeah. Of course, Mabel forgot the gum. Fucking How could anyone classic. in this town? Yeah, She's, but here's the thing she's a classic 14 year old slut. <laughs> 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 Fucking classic. But mine wasn't gum. He licked his lips, uncomfortable in the focus of so many staring eyes. Uh, a rocket of some sort fell in the field. I like to be the one who stares. (laughs) (laughs) Just beyond the irrigation ditch, I found the cylinder inside. It might be, it could be anything. Alvin had the strange sensation for almost 10 seconds of looking at a motion picture film that had stopped in a single frame. Then, as if the projector had started to run again, 
all 30 of the youngsters broke into activity. For another second, the analogy of the film persisted. Elvin had the elusive impression that each of the youngsters was carefully playing a part. Huh? They clamored to go out and see the rocket. Mrs. Shermerhorn protested that they would ruin their clothes trailing over the fields after dark. The guests allowed themselves to be talked into putting off their curiosity until morning. As their excited talk faded, Mabel Travis looked up at Elvin. Oh. Was your darling one on the bookcase, Mr. Elvin? She asked, eyeing him with her enormous blue eyes. Ugh. Yes? Is that where you got... No. The room was still again, and all the youngsters were looking at her with a peculiar anxiety. I thought that was one of the prizes. You know, when we played forfeits earlier in the... Of course, Mrs. Shermerhorn put in. Bill Blake did win a jar of candy, didn't he? Why, why are they refusing to say what this game is? Yeah, I am befuddled. I just do, I, I can't think it's follow. The story bubbles. was total garbage, but at least I knew what was going yeah, on. Yeah, I don't understand any of this. So, okay, here's what I think. They're having con- bubble blowing contest. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Whoever wins Gets wins a jar of candy. Candy, but so someone else did bring candy, but it's but different candy. Different, and they ate. That it's they like a, that. it's like an Ouroboros where it's like there wasn't candy, but you brought candy, so we right. ate the candy for the contest, and we won candy, and then we ate that candy, and then we had a contest, mm-hmm. and we won candy. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he knows what teenagers do at gatherings. No, he's like, what do they do? Uh, uh, they can... gum uh, contests. Look hot. Yeah, <laughs> look really <laughs> hot. Look so fuckable. And that's what I thought the jar was when I saw it on the bookcase, Mary Travis continued. So I took it upstairs and I put it with our coats in the bedroom. I'll get it for you, Mr. Elvin. Slowly, she picked up the nearly empty jar on the floor and recapped it. I'm going to take this back to my drugstore. I'm sorry. I'm going to take this back to the (laughs) drugstore tomorrow morning and demand my money back. I certainly don't like being cheated. When she returned to the living room, she handed Elvin. She's like, that dang drugstore, they sold me candy, but it turned out to be not not gum. The the gum I bought... You can't, and you chew it, but I right. want a refund. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> it was somehow stale. No, no, no. When she returned to the living room, she handed Elvin his cylinder of colored balls, and slowly his fear dissipated. Until a competent authority analyzed the contents, the jar represented unknown danger. It might be harmless, but it could also be an explosive, a form of fuel for the rocket, perhaps even germ colonies used in biological warfare. Okay, so they hadn't eaten his jar no, after he all. he has the jar now. He still has the jar. Has okay. the jar. Wow, I'm glad nothing took place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, I'm glad for a second. Oh, nothing whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, for, just for a couple pages, every reader of the story was confused. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that happened there. <laughs> If Bill Blake had taken it home with him as an innocent jar of candy, Elvin shuddered. The party broke up and Elvin went to his room. He hung his suit carefully at the back of his closet to preserve his creases. I'm sorry, the creases. And thereby cut down (laughs) on the cleaning. (laughs) And thereby cut down on his cleaning bill. After five years of living on a teacher's salary, such economies had become second nature with him. He brought out his blue surge. Balls. Surge A. And hung it on the door. It was the suit he would wear next week to school. (laughs) Saturday dawned crisply sunny. (laughs) Yeah. Elvin shaved and dressed leisurely. Through the dormer windows of his room, he saw the rich black fields that surrounded the ranch house and the distant ridge of misty mountains beyond the desert, one or two of them crested with snow. So he just has the, the mystery balls with him? Yeah. I think so, yeah. And the rocket's still just out there. And his creases are still creased. They're yes. creased. And the teens are still fuckable. So fuckable. But not present. Not present. The Shermer horns, of course, were already awake and busy. Elvin heard the clatter of dishes in the kitchen. He saw the twins, David and Donald, tall and muscular in their tight jeans and brilliant plaid shirts. For a second, thought you were making. Thought you were saying that as a joke yeah. of what the book was. No. Working in <laughs> their shop back of the garage. Pop Shermerhorn was in conference with a score of day laborers clustered around the half dozen tractors in the drive. Through the open garage door, Elvin could see the Shermerhorn Cadillac, the station wagon, and the red convertible that belonged to the twins. The scene could be duplicated with minor variations on any day of the week. Right. Okay. Elvin always resented the Shermerhorn prosperity, even though Pop Shermerhorn had been kind enough to offer him room and board when it was obvious the family didn't need the additional income. 
Alvin never allowed himself to forget that the Shermerhorns owned one of the largest ranches in the valley, as well as the feed store in San Benedicto and half interest in the bank. Yet Pop Shermerhorn actually boasted that he had never gone past the eighth grade in school and his kids were fortunate to be considered mentally normal. Man, Cox fucking hates the Central Valley. <laughs> I will tell you something. He, were- <laughs> he fucking hates like Salinas and mm-hmm. and Bakersfield. Right. He mm-hmm. fucking hates those hillbilly. This is San Bernardino. Those San Benedicto. non hillbilly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, inventing a community and just just a rail against its inhabitants. He's like the anti John Steinbeck. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys were saying about the IQ. We're about to learn the IQs of Donald and David the twins. Whoa. Wow. What do you guys think they are? Um, I think pro- there we're going to learn their geniuses in actuality. <laughs> one hundred eight and one hundred. Do we have we have numerical scores? I'm mm-hmm. going to say I'm going to say they're both like one thirty five. What's the average? Average is a hundred. A hundred. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought Elvin had I the twins in class. He knew the limits of their ability. Donald had an IQ of eighty nine. Oh, David okay. of eighty five. Wow. So they are they are kind oh. of a little, little little slower. Okay. A little lower. Here's the thing is I have an IQ of 121 and I just assumed that, that everybody like did. <laughs> but I'm very smart. Yet such a family literally rolled in money while Elvin was like a slum dweller staring emptily into a crowded shop window. Yeah, because you're a dick and they all get up earlier than you and do their jobs. So Elvin is resenting this working class family. Yes. That's, ba- that's yeah. basically well, they're part of it. Who's like letting- rich he for hates, the valley. Right. He hates self-made men apparently. Yeah. <laughs> These people made money with their hands, not their Ugh. brains. Oh, and they probably read science fiction, too. He's an oh. intellectual. Yeah. Matt Henderson turned in from the main highway as Elvin finished breakfast. He joined the reporter. Oh, he's a reporter. Elvin, we should say, joined right, the right, reporter. Right. And they walked out onto the field beyond the irrigation ditch. In daylight, the train was very different. Elvin backtracked over the same ground several times before it dawned on him that he could not locate the rocket perspiration beaded his face that was impossible the rocket was large enough to be seen from any point in the field I even said it wasn't even five feet yeah it's not, it's not that, that big. big yeah even if some part of the mechanism had caused it to rise again during the night elvin would have found the gaping hole the point of the projectile had torn in the earth but there was nothing not a furrow in the plowed field was disturbed visibly amused matt henderson departed repeating his formula about brands of liquor <laughs> hilarious valley humor This time, Elvin thought the reporter actually believed it. Elvin walked back to the ranch. He was very angry. But more than that, he was coldly afraid, and he had no idea what he was afraid of. The Shermerhorn twins. Maybe like a rocket you saw fall from the sky and disappear? (laughs) Yeah, probably that. Seems like a normal thing to be afraid. The Shermerhorn twins stopped him as he crossed the driveway. You sure made us bite on that one, Mr. Elvin, Donald said good-naturedly. Yeah, David added. All the kids came over early this morning to see your rocket. I guess we deserve it, though. Donald went on philosophically for pulling that deal on you in class last week. Dot, dot, dot. Interesting, interesting. Gary Elvin went up to his room in a daze and sat staring at the bottle of colored spheres. It seemed entirely clear what had happened last night, yet conceivably, the rocket could have been a hallucination. If so, it was because of the grinding frustrations of his job. But Elvin had a good mind. He did not have to let a bunch of discourteous, rattle-brained kids get him down. David and Donald had given him the clue. The rocket was simply a practical joke he had played on his class of 10th graders. Wait, I'm sorry. Huh? He knows that's he not. He knows that's not true. What he did. Yeah. What? Wait. Or is he saying, oh, good, now he can spin it that way? Or is that coming from Elvin or is that coming from another character? This is Elvin. Elvin thinks that the, Elvin's now thinking that the rocket is a prank that He's he like, pulled. He pulled oh, on the kids. All is clear now. I did do what they say, even though I know for a fact that's not what I did. I must have gone into a fugue state and yeah, fugue state. launched a rocket that landed nearby. <laughs> and in and- my fugue state, I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> the second step in driving out the dream was an appeal to authority. He must understand the limits of scientific possibility in the use of rockets. That meant a trip to the library. Although it was four <laughs> miles. Yes, the story's getting interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tight, dude. Idiot if he goes <laughs> nice. to the library. Get away from these attractive teens, library. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although it was four miles to San Benedicto, Elvin decided to walk. The exercise would help clear his head. He entered the library at 11.30, half an hour before the building was closed for the weekend. Oh, man, we didn't get to follow the four miles of his walk. No, I wanted Darn. to be there every step. Yeah. 
I wanted to know about the beautiful, rolling, dry-ass hills of the valley. Yeah, and all the farmers that he passes that he hates. Yeah, right. all about all the roller skating teens he passed by. Yeah, they were roller skating on like a dirt road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's uh-huh. why they're so hot. They're so hot. They have yeah. excellent thighs. Yeah. It was a good library. The assessment rate in Prosper's cool. San Benedicto was high, and books had been purchased wisely. In the card catalog, Elvin found a listed so, sorry, Elvin Powell listed a number of up-to-date references that he could use, but there was nothing on the shelves. Five minutes before closing time, he asked the librarian for help. How do they have a good library and nothing? And then like a bad police force right. and a bad newspaper. Yeah. Libraries aren't usually real high on yeah. the list in city funds. <laughs> Yeah, that, the I Burbank said, Library fucking sucks. Oh, it's man. not great. I've been in no. there. I get we got we get some nice public libraries over in Santa Monica. We got a few of them. Yeah, that's Santa Monica. Oh, that one um, over across from the that building, um, or maybe that's the West Hollywood Library. I'm getting confused. Yeah, that one's nice too. But Santa Monica has some nice libraries. Yeah, they, they, we, we got some lovely libraries there. I, I, they hang out there from time to time. But yeah, th- this sounds like a municipality that has its priorities out of order. If they're of funding course. the the prior, they, they got the. Libraries at the top of the list. And yes, libraries are important and they should yeah, be funded. Absolutely. But you get some maybe more essential services. You yeah, sure. I'm just saying his uh, his story isn't isn't checking out. It doesn't quite add. No, up. no, no. I don't suppose there's anything in. She answered. We've had a perfect run on books all morning. All right. How is everybody in the valley so fucking stupid? But like books are prized. Yeah. The library is full, yeah. and yet all the books are being checked out by these. Stupid ass hill valley folk. I bet the only uh, stuff they stock in this library is dumb science fiction. Oh, all these hicks are checking dumb. out these. That's Isaac Asimov what it books. is. That's what it is. You mean everything in the library is out? Everything, <laughs> everything worthwhile, she beamed. And most of the borrowers were your 10th graders, too, Mr. Elvin. Do you want to check out the Irving E. Cox section? <laughs> I. Okay, here's my. Here's my. That's funny. Here's my prediction. <laughs> they did eat those. Um, little Gummies. gumdrops. Okay, those mm-hmm. were from the thing they went oh. to go study human whatevers by getting all the books. Oh, Maybe. wow! That's I, what I think. I, I thought you were going to say they were like super brain pills and made them all smart. Oh, it could and be so that. They're now they're geniuses and they want they have a voracious appetite for reading. Fair, I believe fair. both of those things. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be neither. <laughs> it's going to be that women are trying to take over the world. Yeah. And then also he wanted to go to a, a secret apartment to smoke his pipe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You've certainly done a wonderful job of inspiring that class to do serious reading. Why, you know, Mabel Travis has been in here three times today. You're she right. Took out, in yeah. some way. <laughs> yeah, she took and, out seven books as soon as the library opened and she had them back by 930. Said she'd read them all, too. Or maybe you're right. Wow. One of you is right. <laughs> Seven books in less than two hours? Elvin laughed. I suppose she thought she had. Poor little Mabel. She hasn't much to work with, you know. But it was her new attitude I liked. So intense. So serious. And she was doing such heavy reading, too. And she was wearing a really low-cut top. (laughs) And it was basically see-through, and I could see her nipples. And it's like, she's smart, funny, and beautiful? (laughs) And 13? (laughs) Elvin walked back to the Shermerlorn Ranch, enjoying the noonday warmth. San Benedicto was crowded with Saturday shoppers. He met his students everywhere, and always they commented on the practical joke he had played on them. Good they story, students. Are gaslighting him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, practical joke. Never mm-hmm. happened. And then he's like, Yeah, I guess, I guess suppose that is the truth. <laughs> By the time he was back in his room, the fiction of the joke was thoroughly established in his own mind. He almost believed oh it himself. Oh my god. <laughs> He's, he's so stupid. He's falling for it. Yeah. Jesus. And he knows he, he is. is. He doesn't mind. He's truly letting himself be gaslighted. Yeah, he really is. You know, he he just has it coming. <laughs> he does. He's been trying to fuck these students for yeah. ages. Right. He glanced again at the transparent cylinder of spheres. A chemist might be able to analyze the contents and say where the jar had originated. Perhaps Miss Gherkin could do it. Or she Mabel had taught now. science for more than 20 years. Yeah, Mabel. 20 years at San Benedicto High. Yet Elvin knew he couldn't ask her for help. If the colored balls turned out to be nothing more than hard candy, then by inescapable logic, he would have to expect accept the fact that he was suffering from a major hallucination. It was more comfortable not to know the truth. But he already said that he was thinking they were right. <laughs> Whatever. When do I stop reading? Uh, probably. Hell. Oh, wait, I should have read to 33%. Let me continue. Thank you. I'm doing math. <laughs> 
The idea of candy, however, brought up another association. Mrs. Shermerhorn had said that earlier in the evening, Bill Blake had won a jar of candy as a prize. Bill Blake was the prize joker of the 10th grade. Mm. Elvin had what seemed to be an intuitive flash of understanding. The rocket had been a joke, all right, but it had been aimed at Elvin. The kids had rigged it up before he came home from the show. And then they made a red light appear in the sky <laughs> and fall to the earth. During the night, they'd come and ba- come back and take the stage studying away. I'm going to say his IQ is about 13. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's it's from it's a IQ of a sponge. <laughs> Alvin spent the rest of the weekend planning his revenge. He didn't think of it as that, but rather a disciplinary action. Yet he knew the class would get the point and possibly even heed the implied warning. In five years, Alvin had reduced the complex process of teaching to one workable rule: break the class, or the kids will break you. Now he chose Ew. the classical cat whip of a surprise test to crack them back into line. I bet you they're gonna ace it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. He spent Sunday planning it and duplicating the pages. What he a little was shit. scrupulously careful, to be fair, at least as he defined the term. The examination covered nothing that had not been discussed in class. But Elvin taught grammar, and no field of the abstract allows such devious application of the flimsy nonsense passing for rules. I don't know what that means. So- it means grammar is... Uh- like strict, but also very vague and hard to mm, nail right. down. This guy should not be teaching <clears throat> no. children no. for a number of reasons. No, no. Like plotting petty, like plotting revenge <laughs> in and of itself, like that being your motive yeah. for a quiz. I want to get revenge on these yeah. kids. Don't don't bring into the classroom what you think happened on right. a weekend. Yeah, you're speculating. You've, you've invented this elaborate theory of what these kids have done to you, and now you're punishing them as a result. Yeah. And also, you're an idiot. Yeah. You- and also, like, do what you got to do, mm-hmm. you know, but also maybe don't live with your students. Yeah, yeah. that seems like a weird conflict yeah. of interest. Mm-hmm. How are you going to grade those twins carefully? Or yeah, they're fairly? so hot. Yeah, they're so hot. They're too that, hot. That too in and of itself is like I mean, a distraction. Yeah. One, they're hot. Two, he has to see them be hot morning and night. I know. Three, he sees how they are in their homes, right. which is going to affect how he interprets their behavior in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Four, they're hot. They're hot. Just got out of the shower, Mr. Elvin. <laughs> it comes out in, like just a yeah, towel. Both of them. I don't know how's he gonna fuck. Yeah, they're showering together. These two hot twins. He's like they're teasing me. How's he gonna concentrate? Like Lolita shit. I'm gonna make this quiz tease. super hard because they're teasing me. At <laughs> <laughs> On Monday morning, with a thin smile, Elvin was ready for them. He had tenth grade English first period. As he passed out the mimeographed pages, he waited for waves of groaning to sweep the room. Or nothing happened. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Do you like this quiz? Is it doing bad things to you? Is it hard? Is it hard? Is this quiz How hard? How hard is this quiz? How, How hard? hard is it? You're making it hard. Nothing happened. He felt an annoying pang of anger. Mm. A hand shut up. Yes, Charles, he snapped. If we finish before the end of the period, can we, we have free reading? I doubt you'll finish, Charles. This test is 10 pages long. But if we do, by all means, yes. Gary Elvin leaned back in his chair and surveyed with satisfaction the 30 heads bent studiously over their desks. (laughs) Look at all those hot heads. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing turns me on more than the top of a head. (laughs) Let me see some scalp. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Is it dry? Ooh, that kid is balding young. (laughs) (laughs) That means I don't got to wait till they're 18. Yeah, he's got some (laughs) high (laughs) tea. For perhaps five minutes, the ideal lasted until Donald Shermerhorn brought his test up to the desk and asked permission to go to the library. Elvin was both amazed and disappointed, but at once he reassured himself. The test had simply been too hard for Donald. Nonetheless, as soon as Donald was out of the room, Elvin checked his examination against the key. As he turned through the pages, his fingers began to tremble. Donald had answered everything and answered it correctly. Wow. What? Wow, that's a before Hot Elvin. And smart. Like, <laughs> what he knew how verbs go in sentences. <laughs> that's crazy. Before Elvin had finished checking Donald's test, ten more students had left theirs on the desk and headed for the school library. Within ten minutes, Elvin was fighting a disorganizing bewilderment far worse than the rocket hallucination. 
Every examination was completed, and none that he checked had as much as one mistake. Elvin wished he could believe that wholesale cheating had taken place, but he knew that was impossible because of the precautions he always took. You know, he probably mixed up the mixed up the question order. Remember mm-hmm. when teachers used to do that? Yeah, that yeah, to, to, to prevent cheating. I, it's, it's also, I wonder if he's just like, oh, I wrote it this weekend. There's no way they could know they could have a, a master copy. Oh, it's yeah. a brand new, mm-hmm. brand brand new, new test. test. Yeah. yeah, they can't cheat off each other. Right. Also, my hubris. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the heart of this. It's hubris. All of the tenth graders were back from the library that by that time. They had each brought two or more books. Elvin's body went rigid with mm, hotness, pleasure, with <laughs> anger when he Dang. saw what was currently passing among them for the skill of reading. They were methodically turning pages almost as quickly as they could move their hands from one side of the books to the other, all with the appearance of engrossed attention. Fuck, they like reading? What? Fuck. This is crazy. No, dude. Oh, no. What's going to happen? Elvin banged a ruler on his desk. One or two faces looked up. This has gone far enough, he cried. You asked for the privilege of free reading, but I do not intend you to make a farce of it. A hand went up. Yes, Marilyn. But we are reading, Mr. Elvin, honestly. Oh, I see. His voice was thickly sarcastic. And what's the title of your book? Toynbee's Study of History. You've given up Grace Livingston Hill. Could you summarize Toynbee for us, Marilyn? I don't know who Grace Livingston Hill Neither is, I, but, but I'm assuming rude. somebody shitty. Yeah. In another 10 minutes, Mr. Elvin, I still have 60 pages to read. Elvin turned savagely to another girl. Mabel Travis, what are you reading? What is she reading? What is she reading? What is she reading? The buxom girl looked up languidly. No. Ew. No. Come on. Two words in that sentence inappropriate. Ew. New box. For a split <laughs> second. <laughs> yeah. You know that just means busty. For a split second, her big eyes seemed focused on a distant perspective. I don't perspective. like that he keeps talking about her no, eyes or something. I don't know what that he is. He has a big eye thing. Yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he's like, leaned on that a few times Everyone's in the story. a Disney princess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big titted Disney princesses. <laughs> He's got, this is, this is, this is a guy he doesn't no. know, like hentai doesn't exist yet. He doesn't yeah. know that's what he's into. Yeah, he doesn't, know, he doesn't get it. Yeah. He's projecting it he's out like, of his uh, eyeballs. I right. wish that yeah. like they um, had really big eyes and like, well now I'm just projecting from anime, but when yeah. they're surprised, they're like, oh, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, oh. Mr. Goldman. No. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> gross. <laughs> Why, why this, Mr. Elvin? She held up her book so he could see the title. Hypnotism in Theory and Practice, he snorted. And Mabel's IQ was 71. Why does he know all these numbers? What? This is so This is insane. Why does mean. he have this, like, book like, of IQs? Also, who fucking cares what their IQ is? Nobody cares. You're their teacher. Teach them. This isn't also, too, this isn't, like... People don't know. This isn't a thing where low IQ people cluster in a certain demographic area. Like that's, yeah. that's a very elitist yeah. sort also, of IQ is not it a is. real no. measurement. No. It's right. not a real measurement. Ugh. And also, yeah, it is a very like, oh, well, you know, all the hill people are like they have lower IQ. Yeah, all the dumb people live in the sticks. All the smart yeah. people live yeah. in the city like, like me. I can see him calling a group of people uneducated right but like low iq the fixation on the iq thing i mean ugh, what but, a lie and if you want to do this why not like why does it have to be a rural thing like why like you know could it, I, I don't know it's, it's weird it feels like you could have like a like oh this is the uh this is the class for for kids who are like maybe behind a grade you know what i mean like you yeah, just, you like just be a, a class at a school English. yeah exactly yeah. exactly Nope, it's the whole region. Yeah, the whole region of smoking hot idiots. <laughs> You've outgrown the comics, Mabel. In a sense, yes, Mister Elvin. God, this guy is so. I hate fucking him so much. I fucking I, hate people him. Who read I know he's so mad about comics. Because, because, like, he's mad that people like Superman more than his fucking shitty yeah. fucking sci-fi stories that he bent yeah. and knocks out in his typewriter. Yeah, or I'll give Irving E. Cox the benefit of the doubt in this tiny little regard, mm. which is he's probably pissed people don't like his yeah. sci-fi. And so like he, oh, got he it. hates Mr. Elvin. He's making, yeah. he, Mr. Elvin is like a, is his projection yes. of he's the like, people who don't Mr. like Mr. Elvin is one of his yeah. enemies. He's got like, it. look at what an idiot this guy is. Like he, he hates, because something bad's going to happen now. Right. Yeah, because he, 
so he's taking somebody who looks down and criticizing his stories and he's putting them in a situation where they have to live through a sci-fi thing. That's and he's what like, it See? is. Like, maybe it can be real. Yeah. But Great. what a monster. Yeah. Elvin was saved from further disorientation by the interruption of an office messenger with a special bulletin announcing a second period assembly. By the time he had read it, his anger was under control. He let the reading go on and spent the rest of the period plodding through the examinations. There was not an error in any of the papers. Wow. From the perspective of the day's events, Elvin later realized that, however personally unnerving, his own particular crisis has been, had been a minor one. What? Huh? Mm. Maybe personal crisis is it is just happens these- later personal oh, crisis here Does, we go yeah that's supposed to be foreshadowing but I see, it's worded I see, I see. very bad okay so basically okay. it's like he so, didn't know how bad it could get yes Great. got it the first full-scale public disaster came during the assembly when the entire student body nearly 150 youngsters was gathered in the auditorium the principal as always rose to lead them in the alma mater he was a huge, hatchet-faced, white-haired man, the terror of evildoer and faculty members alike. He had a tendency to give a solemn importance to trivial things and to overlook the great ones. And there was mo- no mistaking the odd, almost religious fervor with which he sang the school song, which was perhaps only natural since he had written it himself. This is a specific person that he's dragging in this story. Probably. He knows this man in real life. Right. This is so specific. Or this type. Mm-hmm. On that disastrous morning, he suddenly burst into a dance as the student body barreled into the first chorus. He snatched up the startled girls' counselor. Nope. What? And improvised a little Roomba. Roomba? Roomba? I don't know how to say it. It's the small robot that goes. Yeah. It's the little little cleaning (laughs) robot. He improvised a small cleaning robot. Right. It was amazing. The Roomba. 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 I think it's like in between. Roomba. Slowly, the students' voices fell silent as they watched. Under the sweating leadership of the music teacher, the school orchestra held the pace for another bar or two until one of the players stood up and rendered a discordant hot lick on his trumpet. A trio of caretakers carried the struggling principal off the platform, and shouting teachers herded the students onto their next classes. That was not a good description of some sort of fit. What happened? So... Like the, the rumba. whoever rumba. Thank you. Um, so suddenly, in the middle of the song, the principal like went Dances. bananas and grabbed a counselor and started to dance with her, okay. and he had to be dragged off the stage. Oh, okay, that's what it was. That was not described well. But though. the trumpet player was like playing like a cool solo solo to like accentuate like, this. Yeah, rumba. I don't know if he was like trying to join in, but because it was discordant, <laughs> he was trying to like, join in. It cut it, and they're like, off. "Freeze the crowd! Oh, okay. Get out of here!" <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "Ah!" And he's like, "What? I thought you needed a brass I was section. just following. <laughs> I'm Michael. <laughs> a trio of caretakers carried the struggling principal off the platform, and shouting teachers herded the students onto their next classes. Thirty minutes later, the word of mouth information was carefully spread through the school that the principal had been taken to the hospital for observation, and he was doing nicely. But by that time, his fate seemed unimportant, for the girls' tenth grade gym teacher was having hysterics on the front lawn, convinced that all her students had turned into fish. And the boys, oh, the hypnotism book. Oh. And the boys' glee club teacher had abruptly announced that the nation was being invaded by Martians. He, too, had been carried off to the hospital in haste. The rest of the faculty was badly shaken. When they met at lunch, they unanimously wanted the school closed for the rest of the day. But the principal had been too small a man to delegate any of his authority. As long as he was hospitalized, the teachers could do nothing. That's Seriously, not no real. one can They're, step that's in. That's not yeah, real. Come on. Come on. Are you serious? Not powerless. Like, no, if the he does not, not know there, how the, the school system works. Do whatever the fuck they want. There's a vice principal. Yeah. There's a superintendent. There's, Somebody can get on the phone. Yeah. It's fine. They could just band together and say, we're going to shut, we're going to send everyone yeah. home. It would be yeah. fine. I agree. Just send the kids home. Like, what is, what are the cops Because here's show the thing. Up? The kids aren't the ones freaking out. It's the teachers. So they should be like, we're sending the kids home. Something's going on. Right. They're the ones who have the power to do that. This is going to be one of those stories of like, you know, uh, and the thing is, I that sucks is that like I agree with the sentiment where it's like, oh, you don't like this new thing that's happening. Well, like you're just like a part of the past, and the new generation is just going to keep going without you. So too bad. 
I just really mm. hate the format Here's of this. The thing is that I don't think it's that at all. And my fear is that it is basically like love story, like what if women ruled the world? Oh, what oh, if oh, teenagers? Oh, you know what? You might, right. you might be right. You might be right. That's my fear. Here's I'm what, not going to look at Brett. I don't want any indication. Here's He's what just I like think it is. staring at you from the corner of his eye. I'll it, tell you to shut up, Brett. <laughs> here's here's my theory. This is the, the, he's set. He's established a lot of red herrings. What we're going to learn True. is that these teachers have just finally uh, been their their minds have been blown and they can't handle anymore just being around so many sexy teens. Oh, it, the, and it's just uh, the teens are too hot. The yeah. teens are too hot. And it's just talking about the dangers of having yeah. high schools hot where all teens. these hot teens can be concentrated to be observed by by adults. Yeah, yeah. and it's it just it's just overwhelming. Because then we think, it's like, how weird. dare we? How right. dare we yeah. put these adults through this? It's yeah. not fair. It's yeah, not it's fair not to fair. the adults. Who they, could resist? It's so funny that now that you say that, mm-hmm. it's so obvious like, to yeah, me. Every word says it. But, yeah. like, until, like, my eyes have really been opened. It's so funny how that happened. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. After the ominous activity of the morning, however, most of the afternoon passed in relative order. True, the counselor gave pickup tests to three 10th graders whose... Earlier IQ scores had been so low the validity had been questioned. He is <gasps> What obsessed. is this IQ thing? Stop. It's not real. People who care so like they're the people bring that up in like online arguments like they talk about yes. their IQ and yes. anyone who does that is just like the worst A person. It's just like, oh, fuck It's like you. the it's like the Hitler thing. Yeah, right. It's like once you say that I'm like, "Oh, I don't need to engage with you at all." Yeah. Yeah. You felt um, the need to, to point out that your IQ is 141. It's just like, all right, just calm down. Yeah, really. Yeah. The only time I call someone dumb is if they're uh, horrible. Yes, yeah. I would never call a nice person dumb because, mm-hmm. like, IQ is not real and mm-hmm. people are different. Mm-hmm. But and, like, intelligence you know who's is like dumb? This, this fucking guy. Yeah. I, I, it, he reminds me of, like, people that are really into being in Mensa. Right. Yeah. yeah. My dad got my dad was like very he was like, I got offered to be in Mensa. Uh, and I'm like, if you think that's so great, then why didn't you join? And he's like, I just, you know, I didn't have time. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> OK. He's like, I didn't want to be involved with them because it's still elitist. Talk and about I was it. like, well, then why even mention that they wanted yeah. you to be a part of it? Right. Yeah. But yeah, thinking that some sort of nu- there's some sort of numerical like objective a metric you can use to establish your your superiority as a person yeah. and that, that they, as a thinker and that means your argument is going to be more valid than someone else's is like shitty. Well, it also just like demonstrates that you can't think abstractly at all. Right. And that you can't understand that there are like a million metrics for like a million things. Yeah. Um. So, you know what? <laughs> if you care about your IQ, go fuck yourself. Yeah. For you are the dumb one. <laughs> I think you're going to say for you are the devil. <laughs> for you are Satan. <laughs> This is a very this is a Christian podcast, right? Welcome yeah. to our These Christian podcast. Very, yeah. very Christian. I think IQs yeah. are non Christian. Yeah. <laughs> God has the highest IQ. <laughs> <laughs> and this time the same three outdid an Einstein. And the tenth grade math teacher was almost driven to distraction by a classroom discussion of the algebraic symbology equating matter and time, all of which was entirely over his head. Nothing really happened until five minutes before the end of the school day. When Miss Gherkin, oh, finally we meet this Miss Gherkin. When Miss Gherkin knocked weakly on Gary Elvin's door, <laughs> she's been teaching for twenty years, so she's not hot. We know. No, she's not. She's hot. too right. old to be hot. Yeah. As soon as he saw her face, he gave his class free reading and joined her in the hall. Fearfully, she showed him a yellow Bunsen burner, which glowed softly in the afternoon sunlight. This bitch carried a fucking Bunsen. Bur- Wait, was lit? Yeah. How? Where's well, the? Clearly, wh- a teenager did some sort of weird thing. How could she? And do she's this? like, look, it they needs a hose. They built oh a God. tiny sun. Or I'm whatever. worried about this. She needs to not carry on a Bunsen burner. Well, all the teachers are very dumb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you know what it is, Gary? A Bunsen burner. It's one of those gas burners you have on the lab table. Oh my God! That, the metal. I said that I as mean. a fucking joke, He's and he is so stupid. A fucking yeah. moron. Looks like gold. Aren't these rather expensive for a Alchemist. high school? They're being Alchemist. become alchemists. <laughs> Alchemists. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> we. I love that they're not doing 
anything like alien or scientific. They're right. just like, we hypnotize people and we can do alchemy. <laughs> and like, yeah. next we can do witchcraft. It's just like whichever book they've yeah. found, they're experts in. Right. Oh this, my God. This 14th century pseudoscience. Yeah. Also, like, it's now real. Because yeah, I'm that's sure. the thing. They're experts in the book they read. We're hermits. Like, what book has an accurate, like, alchemic equation? Because right. no one figured it out. No. <laughs> no, because it's not real. It would have been real. One of these or kids. maybe they're like so smart that they're like, oh, it was just you didn't carry the <laughs> wand. Just gonna say, oh, they should have carried the wand. It was real all along. <laughs> it was inside you. God mm. has the highest IQ. <laughs> God's alchemy. Do, 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 do. She sagged against the wall, running her trembling fingers over her thin lips. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> Ooh, attractive. <Weird. laughs> well, she's not a teen. Right. It's that she's not what? Grade. She's not a teen. Oh. It's that 10th grade, Gary. I have them last period for general science. Bill Blake and the Shermerhorn twins got to fooling around with the electromagnet. Oh, it was so hot. <laughs> they rewired it somehow and added a few. Well, frankly, I don't understand at all. But now when anything, metal, glass, granite, when anything is put in the magnetic field, it's changed to gold. I can't. Alchemy. They can't either, Kelly. No, they can't. I would be in the same boat. Transmutation of atomic structure. You Wait, know it can't be done. That's him? That's him. I'm sorry. He can say that, but he doesn't know what a fucking Bunsen burner is. <laughs> right. It's the glass thing with the thing on the... But transmutation of atomic energy? One of them gas burners. <laughs> then he's talking about Fermat's last theorem. <laughs> Just, like, pick one. You, you can be an idiot or you can be knowledgeable about science. He has, science. like, huge gaps in his understanding. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, I know it, but I saw it happen. She began to laugh but checked herself quickly. Oh, I'm sorry. One moment. I'll take that again. Yes, I know it, but I saw it happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick. I know that bunch better than you do. It's time one of us had it out with them. The amount of denial. Is yes. So stupid. He's so stupid. <laughs> so very dumb. He strode along the hall toward the science room, Miss Gherkin following meekly behind him. I'm sure you're right, Gary, because the rest of the class hardly showed any interest in what the boys were doing. I actually asked Marilyn if she didn't want her necklace turned to gold, and she said she was too busy to bother. Imagine that from a high school kid. Busy okay. doing what? Oh, God, here we go. Working out the application of the law of degravitation, she said. Wait, what? D degravitation? Yeah. They're going to degravitize the Earth? Yeah. <laughs> Duck, Kelly. Normal, like alchemy, degravitization. <laughs> Hypnotism. Mm -hmm. Chemtrails. 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 Rumba. Illuminati. <laughs> Rumba. Illuminati. <laughs> Logical conclusion. <laughs> the law of degravitation. I never heard of it. Miss Gherkin sniffed righteously. Neither have I, and I've taught science all my life. <laughs> Gary Elvin flung open the door of the science room. It was one minute before the end of the period. For a moment, he looked in on a peacefully ideal classroom. Every student would, was at his bench working industriously. Then, robot... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where's this going? Then, row by row, they began to float upward... Toward the ceiling. Degravitation. Degravitation. Come on. A tiny coil of thin wires twisted intricately around two pieces of metal and an electronic tube. The breeze from the open window gathered them languidly into a kind of huddle above the door. What? The bell rang as Miss Gherkin began to scream. Elvin fought to hold on to his own sanity as he tried to help her, but a degree of her hysteria transferred itself to him. His mind became a patchwork of yawning blank spaces interspersed with uncoordinated episodes of reality. He remembered hearing the bell and the rush of the class out of the room. He remembered the piercing screams of Miss Gherkin's terror echoing through the suddenly crowded halls. Beyond one of his black gulfs of no memory, Fugue, stay. Dash, no memory, <laughs> he was in the nurse's office helping to hold Miss Gherkin on the lounge while the school doctor administered a sedative. They have sedatives at school? They just have. This was a different time. A different yeah. time. You could say box them about a teenager yeah. then. They were doing, uh, school nurses were doing lobotomies. It was, yeah. just, it was a different time. Yeah. You can't hold them by the same standard. Mm -hmm. Slowly, the integrated pattern of his thinking returned when he was driving back toward the Shermerhorn Ranch. 
It was late in the afternoon. The sun was setting redly beyond the ridge of the mountains. As Elvin's fear receded, he was able to think with a kind of hazy clarity. Those are... Those don't go together. He had seen a metal Bunsen burner that had been turned into coal. We don't need to hear yeah. it again. He had, no, we're recounting. Let's just listen. To <laughs> he, he learned what a Bunsen burner was. That's the mark was. of a great storyteller yes. is to repeat everything you've just seen. <laughs> We've experienced that in my yes. junior high yes, book yes, that yes. we're reading aloud on our Teen Creeps Patreon. Um, Every character should re-meet one another in every scene. Right. Yes. Just a constant series of interests. So that we don't worry. Otherwise, I'm like, who is Missy? Yeah. The only topic of conversation should be recapping something that just happened. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then recapping the recap. Right. Mm-hmm. He had seen the crusty principal of the school break into a rumba and three of his colleagues driven to hysteria. He had seen a 10th grade class floating unsupported in the air. All of it manifestly absurd and impossible. But it had happened. Elvin could visualize only two plausible explanations. Visualize. It was a prank that I played on my students. (laughs) It was a prank that I played on me. (laughs) Mass insanity or mass hypnosis. Hypnosis. A sluggish relay clicked (sighs) in his mind. He is like three steps behind. This is so embarrassing. He remembered a book. One of the 10th graders had been reading it. Hypnotism in theory and practice. Fucking Everything duck. seemed clear after that. The 10th grade was an Does it? obstreperous bunch of unsocial adolescents. They seemed very social. Yeah. Somehow they had stumbled upon hypnotism and had learned how to use it. The time for an accounting had come. Because of where Elvin lived, he was admirably situated to break the Shermer Horn twins first. And they were perhaps the weakest members of the group. Right. He's seriously the alpha picking off a pack. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he would have them alone without the support of their peers. Nice. It would be easy. After all, he was a mature adult. They were still children. Once he had a confession from them, it would only be a minor operation to clear up the whole mess. Operation. Reproduction. <laughs> when he reached the Shermerhorn Ranch, dinner was on the table. He had no time to talk to the twins until afterward. Both David and Donald bolted the meal and rushed back to their workshop behind the garage. Their usual bad manners, Elvin realized. But what else could be expected? What the fuck are they doing in there? Elvin... Oh, wait. I think I read that with a slightly different intonation that okay. should have been what it was and is, in fact, not what he intended. Right, okay. Their usual bad manners, Elvin realized. <laughs> but what else could be expected? Oh, I see, I see. Mm, yeah. Got it. Elvin finished a leisurely pipe in the living room and then sauntered out to the boys' workshop. Surprisingly, I'm a casual teacher. <laughs> what are you up to? Saunter, 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 saunter. Hey, hot teens, what are we working on? <laughs> Surprisingly, the door was locked, the windows thickly curtained. They had never taken such precautions before. He knocked and, after a long wait, well, they're both just wising up to the fact that this guy's a creep. Yeah. yeah. They're like, we need to stop him from like constantly peeking yeah. in our workshop it's yep. weird enough that we live with our teacher <laughs> yeah <laughs> we also don't want him coming into our personal space he is the creepy uncle of school mm-hmm. right both david and donald came outside to talk to him <laughs> They're like we'll talk to you outside not in the shop <laughs> what oh no <laughs> yay they were naked to the waist <gasps> Oh, and their yeah. husky, tanned yeah. bodies. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just say shirtless? <laughs> no, because you wanted to they sound sexy. They were naked to the yes, waist. Yes, 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 And yes. their husky, tanned yes. bodies Fuck. gleamed with sweat. Oh, my God. A uh, smudge of grease he's was smeared over out David's hard right now. unkempt, blonde hair. Uh, he's gross. working out so much stuff right in this story. <laughs> working out a lot. <laughs> Working on your car, boys. Alvin inquired <laughs> indulgently. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So he's like trying. He's like he was like trying to come up with something, and he's like, uh, and then like thought back to a porno he saw, and yeah. he's like, working on your car. <laughs> or maybe we should give this guy a different voice now. <laughs> working on your car, boys. Nice. Elvin inquired indulgently. Ew, ew. He's indulgent like a piece of chocolate. He knew the technique. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so rich. <laughs> Let's be bad and have a piece of chocolate. Yeah. Ooh, mm. sipping chocolate. Mm, mm. So European. Very wet. Let's <laughs> Very get, wet. Let's Very get wet. naughty, boys. <laughs> Let's go off our diets for a One, bit. Two, Let's three, go, girls. Four. Let's get naughty. Put Ooh. them at their ease first. Oh, then oh. come to the point when oh. their guard was down. Oh. Well, not exactly, Mr. Elvin, Donald said. <sighs> 
Mind if I watch? I always say I, I can can't learn as much about motors from you two as you learn about me from grammar. Okay. Neither of the twins said anything. <laughs> <laughs> After an uncomfortable silence, Elvin cleared his throat pointedly. Ahem. He had never met with such disrespect. If they were his kids, they would long ago have been taught proper courtesy for their superiors. You take off your pants when a man is present. (laughs) Get on my knee for a spanking. I don't understand why he's offended. They just, like, didn't respond to him. That's what's so offensive to him. It's so weird. When a question is asked of children, they should answer. Right. And then they should get more naked. (laughs) (laughs) To fill the lengthening void, he asked, what did you think of the uh, little test I gave this morning? Ew. Ew. So this is like reading a fanfic about real people. <laughs> I hate this. Okay. It was all right. <laughs> Donald said, you both did pretty well. I'm proud of you. We had everything right, David pointed out without a flicker of expression. Elvin couldn't seem to engineer the dialogue as he used to. Yeah. These kids are, now that they're smart, they know that this guy is, like, creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah. they're smart Huge enough to worm. perceive how strange it is. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're like, wait a minute. They yeah. had that moment where, like, you're like where you're thinking back to the high school years, and you're like, no, but it was, like, crazy weird that Mr. Yeah. Ward fed that girl across his desk. <laughs> right. What was that about? Like, she yeah. can eat crackers yeah, on her she own. She doesn't need a bite from his hand. <laughs> Horrifying. That did happen, and it was with a uh, uh, spoonful of oatmeal. Thank Jesus you. Christ. Very no. gross. She was like, what's that, Mr. Word? And he was like, it's oatmeal. You want no. to try? And no. then he fed her across the desk. That's weird. Isn't that gross? Yeah, that's insane. That's really bad. That's really bad. <laughs> that's really bad. Yeah, that's really bad. But that's him. In that case, this was as appropriate a time as any for the question he had come to ask. He spoke slowly with a tone of disinterest. <gasps> Do either of you uh, know anything about hypnotism? <laughs> <laughs> He's doing really well. <laughs> I'm just picturing like this weird teacher that's been like peeking in your windows. Right. And then you finally are like, hey, what's so I noticed you're like standing outside and he's like, Do you know anything about hypnotism? I'm just like, weird question. Oh my God, you're <laughs> As a shocker, Elvin realized it left much to be desired. Their faces told him nothing. A little, David volunteered. We read eight or nine books on it over the weekend, Donald added. That's a lot of reading. It must have taken a great deal of time. Oh, a couple of hours. Elvin clenched his fists in futile anger, but he kept his voice steady. Is anybody else in the tenth grade reading about hypnotism? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so, Donald admitted. I'm not sure. Why don't you ask in class tomorrow? It occurs to me that a clever hypnotist could be responsible for what happened in school today. Some of it, isn't it rather obvious? We'd like to go on talking, Mr. Elvin, honest, but we have a lot of work to finish. It'll be bedtime soon enough. But you do know about hypnotism, don't you? We know how it's done, yes, and its limitations so far as genuine telepathy. Who created that ridiculous scene in the auditorium? Elvis, <laughs> Elvis, Elvin's voice rose as he tried to put on pressure. I wouldn't worry about the principal, Mr. Elvin, if I were you. He's always been a neurotic. Mighty big words you're using these days, Donald. Where'd you hear them? The principal is a little man. Mentally, I mean. He's afraid of people because he isn't sure of himself. So he makes himself a tin god, a dictator, Mm. just to show the rest of us. I want to know where you picked all this up. Patiently, the twins began to talk, taking turns at delivering an improvised lecture in psychology shot through with an array of highly technical terms. As Elvin listened to their monotonous voices, he slowly felt very tired. His head began to ache as his anger ebbed. More than anything else, he wanted a long night's sleep. Yawning wearily, he thanked the boys. For what, he wasn't quite sure, and went up to his room. Sometime before dawn, Elvin awoke for a moment. He thought he heard the sound of a motor in the driveway, but he was too sleepy to get up to see what it was. Two hours later, he awoke to chaos. What? Mrs. Shermer Horn was shaking his shoulder. He looked up into her white, terrified face. Her hand trembled as she clutched her quilted robe close to her throat. Mr. Elvin, they'll need your help. Mr. Shermer Horn's waiting for you. He shook sleep out of his mind sluggishly. Why? What's happened? The bank's gone. Just gone. 
He the, blinked and shook his head again. The I, bank is gone. gone? I don't think they I don't heard you bank. right, Mrs. Shermer. Oh, here we go. We're on the same page. There's a jungle where the bank used to be. What? With tigers in it. What? She laughed wildly for a moment, but the laughter dissolved into tears and she reached for the bottle of smelling salts in the pocket of her robe. Most of them have been shot by this time, I think. The tigers. Think of it, Mr. Elvin. Tigers in San Benedicto. She began to laugh again. When Elvin joined Pop Shermerhorn and the twins in the station wagon, Mrs. Shermerhorn followed him out of the house with a thermos of hot coffee. As she put it in the car, she saw the rifles they were taking with them. She began to weep again, clinging desperately to the side of the car. Suddenly, the twins knelt beside her and threw their arms around her neck. We're sorry, Mom, David whispers, whispered, terribly sorry. You've nothing to be sorry about, she replied. It's not your fault. Better get back inside, Pop Shermerhorn told her. Mind, keep the doors locked. Things ain't safe no more around here. As they drove into San Benedicto, Elvin was considerably puzzled by the attitude of the twins. Normally talkative to the point of nausea, they were now strangely quiet. And this was exactly the sort of thing that should have inspired their most adolescent repartee. The sun was rising as they stopped the station wagon among the clutter of cars filling Main Street. Elvin stared in disbelief at the neat square of tropical jungle rising cleanly in the heart of San Benedicto. Wait, so has he been hypnotized and this is from his perspective? Like he's no. saying, or, or no, this is an actual jungle has I think this appeared. is an actual jungle. I think they hypnotized him to just leave them alone and go to sleep. Mm. And then when he woke up, found that the teens had turned the, the bank area of into town a into a jungle for some reason. And the twins are like, sorry that they freaked their mom out. I'm really hoping this has just a fucking dynamite third act where oh, it we, will. we figure out where it's just like, oh, I, all this is explained so clearly. This is like so earned. Because, Instead of just more stuff happening. Yeah, because it's so bananas. Like if you wanted to be like, okay, these teenagers are what I thought was happening was like, oh, these teenagers are super geniuses now. There are other ways to show them, show that they're geniuses other than like them having – uh, mastered all these like ancient arts that aren't actually, you know what I mean? It's like, or like yeah. they, they having them, them, they could, they could like, like, you know, solve mathematical theorems or like, you know, speak eloquently. There are ways to show that they are now smarter. Or like building machines. Building machines. And, they don't have to master yeah. anti gravity and, and, uh, you know, alchemy and, yeah, and they're like mystical. Hypnotism. Yeah. yeah. It's like weird. literally transport it's unusual. a jungle. This is turning into annihilation. <laughs> it's not annihilation. <laughs> or Jumanji. Or Jumanji. <gasps> Jumanji. The first or the remake? I was thinking the first. The first. Yeah, yeah, it's more like the first. Yeah, the, the remake, remake didn't is, have the same stakes. No, and also it was different. They were in the other, you know, they were all there. Right. Yeah. Whereas first one, they brought Jumanji, a little bit of Jumanji here. Yeah. And I love the stakes of like Robin Williams was just there for like 20 years. So sad. It's horrifying. Yeah, so it really sad. is. Very yeah. sad. Okay. Not only the bank, but a whole block of business houses was gone. Business houses. <laughs> oh, my business, business house is gone. This could be written off neither as insanity nor hypnotism. It Fucking was a madness finally. existing in actual fact. Elvin gave up trying to discover any logic in what was happening. Both reason and natural law seemed to have abdicated. The periphery of the jungle was surrounded by armed men. At intervals, they shot at shadows lurking among the trees, and as the sun brightened, the accuracy of their aim increased. They were not worrying about causes, either. They were responding with excellent self-discipline to the emergency of tigers roaming the streets of San Benedicto. How? What? <laughs> Afterwards, at their leisure, they could speculate on how the jungle had come to be there. There was only one fatality. A tiger sprang out of the jungle and mauled a man who had pressed too close. It happened directly in front of the Shermerhorn twins. They turned their rifles on the tiger and killed it instantly. But the man was dead, too. Why does there have to be a fatality in this story? Also, it seems like, like it was so, like, just, like, fun and lighthearted for a time. Yeah, because it was all silly stuff. Like, yeah. they're floating. Well, I think what's happening now is that teens are realizing that things have gotten out of control. Yes, right. This is what happens yeah, when, when you... Do whatever you feel like, teenagers. Mm -hmm. This is the story right. of... Listen to your elders. Yeah. This is the I story of the... I feel um, Brett trembling with laughter trembling. in the corner. Trembling. This is what happens when you let teenagers use the internet. It's it like is. they become too smart for right. good. Mm. Alvin was surprised to see tears in the eyes of the twins, but he credited it. Credited it. I'm so bad at saying that. Credited it. So, credited it. 
to the unstable emotions of adolescence. Both of them had acted with maturity when they faced the tiger. No adult could have done more. Still, they wept, even though the man was a stranger. What? Because they have, like, human yeah, <laughs> reactions. That's crazy. Natural. I'm sorry. Yeah, a, man they being saw mauled, a man be mauled in and, front of them. And then and they, had to, and they had to kill the tiger. Had to kill the tiger, yeah. I thought that they were competent, but pff, look at these teens crying over a man's death. <laughs> <laughs> Typical teens with their crazy hormones. They watched a jungle spring up out of nowhere <laughs> yeah. and a fucking magic tiger jump out and maul their <laughs> oh, neighbor. Jeez. Then Go back to, to the soda shop. Yeah, and then to fucking shoot it. Okay, <laughs> kids, grow up. <laughs> You've already done so in your bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely, <laughs> might I add. <laughs> Wink. By 8 o'clock, the stirrings in the jungle had stopped. The men began to relax. Waitresses from the Bit of Wee Cafe. <laughs> oh, cute. Brought bit out of Wee? Bit of, bit of Wee. Bit of dash a dash W-E-E Cafe. Bit, bit of Wee Cafe. <laughs> That sounds nice. Yeah. That's, that's different. I thought it was bit o we. <laughs> like yeah. a bit like of a little pee bit of pee cafe. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what bit he, o, he, he, Hey, you want to get a copy down at the bit o urine? <laughs> every, yeah, you get a little a little bit of pee with every entree. <laughs> you, Just a little a little cup on the side like you want a little pee string. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want it, but they don't charge for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's optional. <laughs> it's like the the maple syrup that comes yeah. with your pancakes. It's like yeah. the ao- the chipotle aioli they keep trying to push on me at Tacos to Madre. Get the that shit out of my fucking face. I don't want that with my bean and cheese burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. They're my mortal enemies. I know. They are I my know. mortal enemies. She's talked about them before. I go there every, <laughs> like, three times a week, and right. they fuck up my order literally every time. Why do you keep going there? I don't know. It's so close to our house. It's I extremely gotcha. close to my house, and I like their bean and cheese burrito, <sighs> and I like their red salsa. So that's my order. That, and I get I mean, a bean and cheese burrito with some red salsa on the yeah. side. They can't do it. They cannot do it. Half the time, the woman's like, "What did you? What kind of eggs did you want in your breakfast burrito?" And I'm like, "Hello." Half the time, they, well, every time, they give me this chipotle aioli and no red salsa. Oh man, at these fucking monsters! And I'm never mean about it either. Yes. I'm always like, "Oh, sorry, I asked for some salsa." And then the last time I did that, the waitress was like, "You can just go grab it from in there." Oh man! And I, I could not find it, and she's like, oh, "Fine, uh. I'll get it." These people are so inept. I bet I you know I bet all these workers there you know have what? like sixty eight IQs. IQs. Yeah. Low IQs. Ugh, it's disgusting. I'm about to jump to this stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyways, I like their food. Anyways, Bidoui brought out donuts and coffee and distributed them among the crowd. There came then a new disturbance at the far end of Main Street, a shouting of tumultuous voices. A mob moved slowly into the center of town, clinging to the sides of an antiquated dump truck. Gold, gold, gold. Tie. It was this like a, a Mad Max shouted with fuck? ecstatic ant- antiphony. The dump truck stopped and Elvin saw the unbelievable gleaming heaps of gold shoveled like gravel into the back of the vehicle. The driver stood on the running board, weaving drunkenly. The whole damn desert, he shouted. All of it, far as the eye could see, all pure gold. Well, now there's too much. It's funny because I immediately turned him into a... Prospector, prospector yeah and changed the words of the sentence even <laughs> to fit that <laughs> when what he actually said is as far as i could see oh, and gotcha. i went far as the eye could see <laughs> <laughs> he took a shovel and scattered the nuggets and dust among the throng <gasps> take all you like lots more where this came from the mob stirred slowly at first and then more and more violently as the men began to race for their cars this is very much like see Teens, you can't just wish for whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Yep. yeah, too much of a good thing, mm-hmm. huh, kids? As the men as the men began to race for their cars, the vehicles were already crowded close together. Gears ground and fenders crumbled. The street became helplessly jammed with locked cars. Only a few on the fringe escaped. Angry arguments broke out, degenerating into fistfights. The peak violence cooled a little after a few heads had been smashed, and grudgingly the men turned to the task of freeing their cars. Donald snatched Elvin's arm. Stay here with Pop. No, excuse me. Stay here with Pop, he shouted above the clatter. (laughs) Dave and I are going back to the ranch. Mom may need us. The desert runs right up to the edge of our property, you know? Going to walk? I think we can get to the station wagon out. I think we can get the station wagon out. It's pretty far back. Elvin and Pop Shermerhorn worked side by side, helping untangle the massive vehicles. After an hour order... 
After an hour, order had been more or less restored, and the mob had then, since each of the freed cars had been driven off at top speed to the desert bonanza. How is there still 33% of this left? Here's what I'm... I was literally just to be like, about to say, like, this story is so... like. <laughs> For the things that happen, right. it's so it's boring. A, it's so boring. Yeah, it's exactly. So boring. Like you could just be like, "Hey, this guy found some magic beans. The <laughs> kids ate them. They got really smart. They right. learned telepathy or hypnotism and alchemy. And jungling. now there's gold everywhere. And there's yeah. And now they learn jungling. And there's a jungle. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is like That's a it. this uh, Irving E. Cox. It's like it's like a Lars von Trier challenge where like it's like okay, uh, you have to write a story that has a <laughs> UFO and uh, fucking uh, anti gravity and uh, uh, alchemy and then a jungle filled with tigers um, and a bunch <laughs> of uh, hot teens. But you also have to make it very boring. Yeah, like you can't like it, there can be no stakes at any point. It's like yeah. uh, a writing prompt that you'd get in high school, right. and then a high schooler is writing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And we all know they have low IQs. Yes. Mm-mm-mm-mm. For a moment, the sky darkened. Elvin looked up. The jungle had disappeared. <laughs> what? <laughs> the jungle had disappeared and a medieval castle. I cannot have this knights. happen. I cannot. This. I cannot this stand. This sucks. I can't. I cannot abide this story. This the mob shrank back insane. in terror. I, this is so funny. Fucking dumb. We bought they, this. This this lost all of us at the exact same yeah. point. It's when the jungle disappeared in the medieval castle. We are not done. No, I can't do. I'm getting like so did the knights. From this although story. one or two on the battlements ventured to send shafts into this new enemy that had appeared at the castle gates, but there was no time for real hostilities to develop. For the castle vanished, and a 19th century factory took its place. So the they have factory like survived a less than time. 30 seconds before it gave way to the bank and row of stores which had originally stood on the site. That's time travel? So I they guess. created like, like a, a wormhole? An arcane oh. stitch. Yeah, it's warping. Yeah. But like where in the world geographically? It's Carmen San Diego. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's it must be know. a hole in space and time. Then. Right. Because yeah. jungle. It's like, yeah, they like punched a hole. Because honestly, into time like, if they were really going really far back, it'd be like Pangea. And so like that would be like yeah. ocean. Because like honestly, there would be like a fucking like seven foot tall sloth. <laughs> yeah, but, the, but there weren't medieval castles ever in North America. Like that wasn't like. No. Yeah, yeah, it's the, time and space. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. So weird. Unless it's like maybe it's like now and it's just like a recreation like group, like people that do like um Okay, when I was in high school, yes. my high school Spanish teacher had a crush on um, this guy that used to do California Days, um, which is like when you recreate oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the California and like the California Times or whatever. Right. And um, for extra credit, she like always made us go to the California Days. And then um, it was like they would just recreate those battles. So it could be a medieval recreation of today. So they're going in the future. Oh, that's mm. what it is. Yeah. It's like medieval times. It's or medieval times. We've like read this wrong at some point, and it, this is actually San Benedicto, Spain. That's probably what it <gasps> is. España. España. Not, we've never been in California. Yeah. It's also too like I just I like that's that's where Cox's imagination goes of like like we have all of time and space we can play with. Yeah. We'll have a jungle, a medieval castle, okay, and then a 19th century factory. <laughs> the that least is the interesting. triangle shirt. Yeah. Disaster. Yeah, yeah. Fucking boring. Like. <laughs> the triangle shirt factory fire. Yeah, a bunch of uh, a bunch of underage laborers are going to get black lung. It's <laughs> like, oh, this is cool. Oh, sad. For some reason, okay. For some reason, the crowd began to cheer. Of course, he would cheer. The fucking bank came the back. The town's back. No one knows why. Once a As they would murder a man. <laughs> some re- restoring normalcy is like cathartic. And it's like I, one second, like. Teens are sad about a man being mauled, and the next second, when things are normal, people start cheering. <laughs> it's crazy. I out guess here. I'll never understand this younger generation. <laughs> As they would a victorious football team. But the tumult died quickly, for the buildings were covered with a slime of jungle vines torn up by their roots, and a pair of snarling lions stood at bay on the sidewalk. After they had shot the lions, they found a cobra was coiled on the cashier's desk in the bank, and an antelope was imprisoned in the dry goods store. Here's what I'm going to say right now. What? Considering that there's, like, a mix now of, like, the jungle and this 
city block, Mm -hmm. I would say that that's like minor. They're like, oh my God, there's like a lion and an antelope and it's a cobra. Like, I'm like, it's that's a yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, that's like three animals. <laughs> like, like a bank has just reappeared, mm-hmm. and you're like, what's up with this snake? Yeah. Yeah. There's a cobra in the cash register. <laughs> that's they also, weird. They also introduced two lions and then immediately killed them. Yeah, like, it wasn't the even like sentence. a moment of tension. <laughs> Thank God, I was so so scared. <laughs> They were still clearing out miscellaneous wildlife when reporters from the city newspapers, appraised by the San Benedicto News of the gold strike, whatever, descended upon the town. They were followed by a deluge, 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 thank you, professional voiceover lady, of prospectors arriving in anything that would move. Bicycles and Cadillacs, Model Ts and Greyhound buses. Let's start right at the top. All right. The mob poured into town first by the scores and then by the thousands. Primarily male, their prevailing mood was explosive instability. (laughs) (laughs) A glassy-eyed greed flamed higher as each truckload of of gold poured back into town Mm. from the diggings. The four-man police force was helpless. The major telegraphed to Sacramento for the National Guard. In the interim, he deputized every townsman he could find, among them Elvin and Pop Shermerhorn. Oh, that's a bad idea. Not a good idea. This is a downgrade. Yeah. I do not They're want Elvin better with, just with a gun. Four. Yeah. Elvin worked until he was exhausted, herding the mob into the streets and through the town as rapidly hey as they would move. <laughs> Maybe hey. try and go this way. Don't. you hurry up a little bit? <laughs> and still there was no relief, and the number in the throng increased by the minute. Newsreel trucks, television units, press cars twisted among the vehicles heading for the desert. What's a television unit? Does you know, mean like a news yeah, I mean, it's, like it's, a it, what it's, it, 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 it defines itself. <laughs> Channel 7 television unit here <laughs> has seen this blaze. Regularly, uh, regularly heavy duty trucks brought tons of gold back from the diggings and deposited them at the bank until the aisles overflowed and the precious metal sifted through the windows, forming little pyramids in the street. <laughs> Not so precious now, are we? <laughs> <laughs> by, by noon, treasury men flew in from Washington. They circled the diggings and landed to inspect the quality of the gold hoard at the bank. Fifteen minutes later, a rumor filtered among the deputies. The treasury men estimated that San Benedicto Strike would yield upwards of two or three hundred thousand times the known gold supply of the world. What? Yep. When the gold's San... not valuable it's anymore. It's not. Yeah, no. Then stop getting it. <laughs> It's going to destabilize the world economy. All those, uh, all those uh, uh, fucking end of the world uh, apocalyptic people who invested oh, yeah, in gold. The gold. They're oh fucked. yeah, Donald. Oh yeah, you think money grows on trees? <laughs> You'd be sorry if it did. <laughs> when the San Benedicto news came out mid afternoon, it headlined the first shock of the economic disaster. Oh, Duh, here we go. Here, here we, we go. go. Here's what's happening. World <laughs> currencies were collapsing. Duh. Three nations were already bankrupt. Okay. International trade was grinding to a standstill with no medium of exchange. Use marbles. Well, hold <laughs> on. Just, <laughs> it's not like we're like what we don't just go by the gold stop standard. Using gold. This was off just the stop gold using standard gold. at the start yeah. of the twentieth century. Come oh, on. Retail prices in the United States had started to skyrocket in the wake of rising stock market quotations. And still, the procession of dump trucks brought the tons of gold back from the desert. I like to think that, like, the Shermer Horn twins just enter on Irving E. Cox writing this story, and they're like, we're not on the gold standard anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we read a book about it. Also, yeah. stay out of the garage. Yeah. It's our space. <laughs> Fucking creep. When the bank overflowed, the dry goods store was commandeered as an emergency depository, and later the 5 and 10 in the sprawling basement of Montgomery Wards. I haven't thought about Montgomery oh. Wards in a while. Well, I haven't thought about Montgomery Wards yeah. in a long time. Yeah. Montgomery Wards and May Company. Yeah, I used to, I used to mm-hmm. enjoy going to a trip to Montgomery Wards because they had toys and video games, and some of the department stores didn't. Yeah. Mm. Uh, when the first contingent of National Guardsmen marched into San Benedicto, it was obviously too small to police the mob. The press estimated that a quarter of a million people were moving into the valley every hour. More guard units were summoned, and ultimately, at the governor's request, two regiments of the regular army were dispatched to San Benedicto, along with a tank corps and 10,000 Marines from Camp Pendleton. It was oh. night. Camp Pendleton. San mm-hmm. Diego. Okay. There you okay. go. Hometown. Hold on. I'm going to look up <laughs> San Benedicto. It was nice. I, I think it's not. I think, yeah, I think it's a fake. I mean, because I. Is it fake San Bernardino? I That's just what I think it now is. am like. Is Benedicto even a I think name? I would have heard of, uh, with three lifelong Southern Californians, yeah. none of us have heard of San Benedicto. No. That makes me suspect yeah. that it's, it's I, a I assume made, made up made town. It, up. Yeah. it was nightfall before the deputies were relieved. Tired and dirty, Elvin and Pop Shermerhorn rode back to the ranch on a prospector's truck. 
From the lawn, they looked across Shermerhorn's plowed fields of the desert, teeming with mobs of men and bright in the glare of countless Hot. searchlights. Mobs of hot men. Yeah, sorry, I skipped a word. You Mobs of it. hot sorry. men. I just like I just knew that yeah. that word was there. Mrs. So Shermerhorn. With this work. <laughs> Mrs. Shermerhorn met them on the porch. She clung to her husband's arms, trembling. I'm so glad you're back to safety, she whispered. They've been moving closer all day. She nodded toward the desert, like ants trampling and destroying everything that gets in their way. <laughs> My brother was ants. trampled by ants. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What is that? That's not. Ant, ant, I don't it's think it's trampling things. It's like things. that scene in Lion King gets, when uh, when, Mufasa when Mufasa gets, gets trampled, trampled by, by ants. ants. This guy just did, it, or or like uh, the all the fucking running dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. This guy just yeah. needed a better yeah. point of reference. Yeah, yeah. He hadn't seen Jurassic Park yet. Yeah. Um, Pop Shermer Shermerhorn clenched his fists. If they'd broken in here, I'd have. I'd have. have I'd have punched him. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is that, the ne- is that really the next sentence? I guess it is. Okay, so if they'd broken in here, I'd have. If it hadn't been for the twins, I don't know what might have happened. To me, that seems like a non sequitur, but that's how it goes. Oh, I, I guess he was like speaking haltingly. Yeah, okay. They got their class over here the whole 10th grade. All day long, they've been patrolling our fences without even stopping long enough to eat. They're all out in the workshop now. They've made it a kind of headquarters. The three of them went into the living room. Pop Shermerhorn and Elvin dropped wearily on a couch, while Mrs. Shermerhorn poured stiff drinks for both of them. The radio was playing, a smoothly sweet dance orchestra from San Francisco, but the music faded abruptly, and an excited newscaster interrupted. It's been like this all day, Mrs. Shermerhorn said. She looked up nervously as the side door opened and the twins came in. We just wanted some more copper wire, Mom, for the thing we're making, Donald said. <laughs> the thing we're making. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you making? A thing. Donald said, but he hesitated when he heard the news broadcast. Both twins dropped silently in the arms of an overstuffed chair and listened. The bulletin was brief. They both sat in the same chair. (laughs) That's what what they're saying. (laughs) Twins do everything together. (laughs) The bulletin was brief. It reviewed the growing chaos among the foreign exchanges, the expanding lists of bankruptcies, two European nations driven to internal disaster. (laughs) It's listing everyone filing for bankruptcy every individual <laughs> yeah. and business chapter, that had filed. chapter 11 and chapter 13 yeah, yeah. donald william tongue <laughs> annabelle well, this, william tongue this is this is going backwards in alphabet <laughs> reverse no that's where we are that's why they oh, left oh, okay, out. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. two european nations driven to internal disaster had gone to war already the big powers <laughs> were choosing sides fucking fast yeah immediately yeah. going to war also they're just they're wars because they're both poor they England can't even figure out Brexit. I know. I know. Yeah, there would be like civil disorder before just all out war. <laughs> Already the big powers were choosing sides, framing ultimatums. War seemed to be the one universal panacea for all things. In New York stores, it started to quote new dollar prices every hour, although purchases made in silver were still relatively stable at the old value. And so then that's why you can't go out with silver. Marie on yes. Saturday night. <laughs> Uh, the uh, the grading voice concluded, the first estimates of today's yield from the San Benedicto field place it in the neighborhood of 70,000 tons. Mining experts predict that tomorrow the figure may be tripled. Why do they keep mining? Stop and doing yeah, just gold. Mining. Just, just don't do gold anymore. Someone, you may as well just dig up dirt. You may would, as well get water. Exactly. You, at some point there would be like a, just a prohibition on more uh, mining and they just sort of be like, look, we get no one's no one's going in there until we figure this yeah, all no out. No one's buying your dumb gold that you're digging up. Right. Now yeah, now it's worthless, so why is the rush oh, still why going do you on? Keep digging? As the music came on again, Donald got up and snapped off the radio. The economy of the world's being wrecked, isn't it? he asked. By too much gold. I don't understand, Bob Sh- Yeah, yeah. This guy is finally By putting too it together much now. Gold. Yeah. <laughs> this thing that they've been saying like, repeatedly yeah. on the news, this this report, it's finally clicked for you. Maybe I shouldn't be working on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand, Pop Shermerhorn answered, shaking his head. Gold's valuable. We need it. It makes us rich. It's because they are it's so rare. Stu- I can't deal with this story. Why is this everyone is, so stupid? This is, just stop using gold. I mean, I, but we we were told they have low IQ. Shermerhorn yeah. has low yeah. IQ, and you can't. can't and that's why they don't know things. I, Shermerhorn didn't eat one of the alien Tide pods. Yeah. So he's not a genius. <laughs> Gold's valuable. We need it. It makes us rich. But now, when we have all we want. The trouble is, it has no use, David said. Governments buy it and bury it. If gold becomes as plentiful as iron ore, we still can't do much with it. 
You can't make skyscrapers or sewer pipes out of gold. It's too soft. <laughs> this is so funny. Mm-hmm. That's this why we're so not right. using it for our thing. I need to go to Irving Cox's grave and take a big <laughs> fat shit on it. <laughs> That's, a, that's a, there's actually a different cafe in uh, <laughs> in this town in San Benedicto. Bit of poo. Yeah, a little poo, bit of poo. Oh, bit of poo. Uh, the government ought to clear out the field and stop the mining. Donald suggested that might help. Not as long no. as the world knows the gold. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. no won't. <laughs> Not as long as the world knows the gold is still here. Elvin answered. He studied the twins carefully. Their comment on the economy seemed to mature for tenth graders. It's not. <laughs> No, it's not. It wasn't. It's not. It wasn't. No, these kids, they're more mature than other kids their age. <laughs> oh, are, he's grooming are, them. They, yeah, he's these like, are special kids. You guys just kids. seem a lot older. Oh, yeah, they seem older. an old soul. I keep forgetting wow. that you're only 15. <laughs> you know about the Beatles? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Elvin's weary mind began to piece together a vague kind of understanding when he remembered the transformation of the Bunsen burner to gold. Beyond his shadowy comprehension... <laughs> loomed the vista of a grandiose dream of how he could use the situation for his own profit. It was intoxicating. More gold. <laughs> <laughs> like reaching out for the stars and finding them within his grasp. It's all crazy, David cried. We don't really use gold anyway in our economy. Why can't we just forget? Yeah. Yeah, why that's what, why yeah. are we not all listening to Dumb? David? Right. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> the world. Listen to this teen, the world. Why can't we just forget it and go on using dollars the way we used to? Because people are fools, Alvin said. No, that's not how it no, works. It's because you are a fool. <laughs> because you are a goddamn fool. <laughs> or perhaps just children, David replied. Mm. He stood up stretching so that his muscles rippled beneath his plant shirt. Wait, are you being serious right yes. now? Are you being serious right now? Yes. What? Are you being serious? The sentence verbatim. He stood up stretching so that his muscles rippled beneath his plaid shirt. <laughs> Well, we better get that wire done and go back to work. There's the Irving E. Cox yeah. I know. Oh, baby, we're back in it. I'm back in it. I feel refreshed. I feel rejuvenated. I feel as young I've as one of those twins. I've got an empty bladder yeah, and yeah, baby. Yeah, ready baby. to party. I'm eating the halls. I'm ready. Let's, <laughs> let's find out what the what's going on with these jacked 15-year-olds and yeah, their yeah, thing. And their thing. <laughs> After the twins had left, Elvin went up to his room to bathe. His mind skipped pleasantly. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Ew, right? So the kid no. gets up and stretches, and he's like, "I'm gonna take a shower." <laughs> I have to bathe. I'm, I'm, I'm really dirty right no one, now. No one come in. I'm gonna be in there for a while. <laughs> I have to bathe. <laughs> the lock's broken in the bathroom. Just want to make sure no one goes in there. Like the next twenty minutes. After the twins had left, Alvin went up. It's to in his, use. Yeah. It's in use. Someone's in here. <laughs> Went up to his room to bathe. His mind skipped pleasantly over the delightful and limitless possibilities of his, of his new understanding. <laughs> the whole new thing. <laughs> the whole thing, of course, hinged on his approach. But after all, that shouldn't be hard. They were children emotionally. Five what? years of teaching. Why does dem- he still Why think he, he can outsmart them? I don't know. I'll. I know. I'll get them to make things into gold for me. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that sucks is that if we know Irving. He's we going do. to outsmart the kids that are smarter than him. That's yeah, true. Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. That's true. Five years of teaching had demonstrated to his satisfaction that he could handle any adolescent. Just like he, the 10th si- time he said oh, that. Oh, wait, that yeah. was Adolescents Only, right? Oh, the wait. Yeah, the title is Adolescents Only. Oh, there's a big sign out on their clubhouse while they make their thing. Adolescents mm, Only. Right. <laughs> Ages them. He began to dress. <laughs> the clothes he had worn that day were streaked and torn. He took his second suit out of the closet. As he hung the coat over the back of his desk chair, he heard metal strike against the wood. It was the coat he had worn on Friday night when he found the rocket. In the pocket was the strip of metal that had been sealed over the cylinder of colored spheres. He held it in his hand again. It was the first time the full surface of the metal had touched his skin. As he had before, he felt the sensation of jumbled woods. Jumble, oh, sorry, let me take that again. As he had before, he felt the sensation of jumbled words flooding his mind, but now the feeling was more intense. He could not put the metal down. Instead, he dropped onto his desk chair, and his eyes were drawn irresistibly to the pattern of tiny, translucent globes that dotted the surface of the metal. The heat of his body produced a chemical reaction, one by one, that the little globes exploded. What? Pictures filled Elvin's mind of cities, machines, towering stacks of books. Mm -hmm. These dissolved, and he saw planets whirling on the black emptiness of space around the glowing disk of a red sun. This is like that scene in Fifth Element where... um... 
Lilu like absorbs all of the history of like right. the past two hundred years, like in a like mm-hmm. super fast video. Yeah, just a super duper quick mm-hmm. like a uh, Manchurian Candidate montage. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Red Sun. There was a cataclysmic splatter of light as the sun exploded, and a slashing flame shot out to destroy its circling planets. That picture too disappeared, and he was staring at a gray nothingness. Well, an emotional voice spoke to him deep within his brain. He just watched the end of the world that the rocket came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he just saw. An emotional voice? I guess what this is. Yeah, he saw the voice. <laughs> he saw the voice, the show. <laughs> um, emotional episode. This is his favorite. To the intelligent life form on the third planet, System K. Greetings from the dying world of Dairon. <laughs> We Shouldn't have, have named our world on the that. Nose there. Should have named it Liberon. Liberon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? But you, know, you reap what you sow. Hindsight 2020. Mm-hmm. We, you have located our rocket from the hypno. Wait, hold on. Let me. Hip, hypnotic cord? Hypnotic cord. Okay. You have located our rocket from the hypnotic cord. It's pretty embarrassing that you couldn't say that made up world. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. You know, you, I've, seen it, I've seen it a bunch of times I've never said it yeah. aloud. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah that Built happens. into the fins. That's why you practice. How, many, how often do you, do you read hypnotic cord? I've read it in thousands yeah, of stories. how often do you say it? You never say it. You mm-hmm. never say it. Built into the fins and by opening it, you have demonstrated a condition of rationality that we are able to help. What? Because he opened a thing? Yeah, because he opened it. It means he's smart enough this to understand this so message. This is so has to our test of taking an object and turning a lid on it. Isn't that one of those things that they, they'll they be like, they'll put like that into a chimp habitat and then just see that a chimp, chimp can open a jar, you know? Yeah, and they'll too. be like, right, they use yeah. tools. Yeah. 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 Basically, any animal can get a jar open. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Demonstrate a condition of the rationality that we are able to help. We speak to you now through hypnotic pictures, which you are translating into hypnotic, the symbology. Whatever. That's what sure. it says. It's yeah. fine. Hypnotic pictures. It's fine. Great. Which you are translating into the symbology of your own society. Our astronomers predict that our planetary system will soon be destroyed because our sun is dying. It is useless for us to try to escape, for no world that we can find within the limits of our telescope has the particular combination of atmospheric gases which we need in order to live. The only sky body that we have ever studied that gives any indication of higher life forms is yours. To it's you, too then. bad we were wrong. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> to you, then. We send the substance. By the way, this is so fucking long. Really? I can't believe how oh, many it's pages. like that bit of paper that he found in Love Story that explained oh, the entirety yes. of yeah. the mystery of their world. Yeah. 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 It just keeps going. The only, uh, to you then, we send the substance of our knowledge, the laws and principles that we have developed over a period of two million years since our recorded history began. Wow. So this society has been around for a while. That's a really long time for a society to make it. They're like hyper developed. Yeah. And all, and the best thing they've come up with is a rocket with a jar inside. (laughs) So maybe, maybe Dyron deserved to die. Yeah. (laughs) We could have sent our machines, our libraries of records, yet the chance that you would not comprehend them alone is too great. Instead, we sent our learning capsules, which we use in the instruction of our young. Break the container which is sealed into this rocket and consume one of the colored spheres. It is basically a stimulant to the cerebral cortex of any reasoning animal which already has a memory of the past and a concept of the future. Long ago, we discovered that, unaided, the mind will function with only a small portion of its specialized cells. This stimulant forces conscious activity upon all parts of the oh, cortex. Oh, 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 what is this movie? You you take this pill and you use all of your mind. It's limitless, yes. right? This is limitless. limitless. That's what uh, this is. In the process... It's like Lucy, but I've never seen that. Lucy? Similar, oh. similar. It's, yeah, similar. all those stories where it's like, did you know that human beings only use like 10% of their brain? Which is bullshit, right? Yeah. But they yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, they treat it as real in both those movies and they yeah. unlock their full brain and they're super smart. It's just like fun. It's a fun story. It's fun. Whatever. Not not this one. No, but this one is others, not. No. Yeah. So this is all on a lid. This, yeah, <laughs> this is all written this on, is a all on a lid. On the lid. Okay, well, right. this is he's like he, he's it's it's telling like, him. Yeah, it's yeah. being told this. So he's just sitting for like two hours. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> listen to this unending monologue. Yeah. In the process of stimulation, your brain will receive the full knowledge of basic principles which we ourselves have developed. We send you fifty of these only, but it will be enough. You have not on your planet the material with which to make additional capsules for your people, but you will not need them. The 50 who learn from these will become teachers for the rest. Carry on for us the culture that we have made on the dying world of Dairon. 
Sincerely, Man, I Dyron. Hate to break it to Dyron, <laughs> but it's not got found by the wrong dude. Yeah. yeah, this is not good. They gave it to the fifty dumbest, hottest teens, and they were all clustered in San Benedicto. <laughs> the gray mist faded, and Elvin stood up. He felt refreshed, alert. His mind bubbled again with schemes. <laughs> Schemes and dreams. <laughs> Bubbling schemes. He looked at the bottle of colored spheres still standing on his desk, <gasps> and he knew they were no more than bubble gum or candy. On Friday yeah. night. Duh. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, fucking of course. Fucking duh. Of course. Don't fucking sum up what we've already we know. understood. We knew that the second this happened. On Friday night, while he telephoned, the 10th graders at the Shermerhorn party had started their bubble gum contest. But instead of gum, they had by accident. We know all of this. Jesus well, now, Christ. I can't. We, know. we this all put this so together. Irving. All he had to do was say, the message ended. Suddenly everything made Became sense. Clear. Yeah. yeah. Irving. But Irving, instead of gum, they had, had by accident absorbed the accumulated knowledge of Dyron, a culture more than 300 times as old as the Earth's. Wow. We knew that. It was overwhelmingly clear what had happened after that. 30 adolescents. Suddenly possessing, there were 50 we capsules, know. though, 50 right? 50 capsules, where are those 50 capsules? Yeah, where are there are 20. 30 adolescents suddenly possessing more knowledge than the world had ever known had run riot, playing with hypnotism, the transmutation of matter. <laughs> the, the most l- dangerous game, <laughs> hypnotism! <laughs> the law of degravitation, the fourth dimensional transportation of whole city blocks. Within two days, their energetic curiosity, their adolescent love of excitement and experiment had thrown the world into crisis. By this time, Elvin concluded... They would be terrified by a feeling of immense guilt. This is why teens shouldn't read. Mm-hmm. Ready to be told what to do to make amends. By the way, yes. teens famously lack empathy, and they, that's like a thing. It takes a little while to develop. <laughs> yeah, right? you learn that later. Yeah, some of those would. Li- some of these teens would just like love that they just had all this power now. Well, maybe right? um, in developing their brain, it also develops uh, the empathy part. That could be it. But yeah. when they also then then why would the recklessness still be an element? Uh, it's not a lot I of think it's just like we. I guess so. But, like, we know that they're empathetic because they were upset when a man got mauled by a tiger. It's true. It's true. That was a real moment for him. I tried to look at the um, Elvin, like, what does that name mean? Because I'd never heard that name before. Mm -hmm. And then this is what I (laughs) found, (laughs) which is just, like, a lot of clip art of I Love Elvin. (laughs) Wasn't that the son on the Cosby (laughs) show or the son-in-law? Elvin? Oh. Am I wrong about that? I it sounds forgot like about that what that if, show is like. not being that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's Noble see. friend is what it means. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, oh, wait. I concluded they were terrified of feeling immense to go ready to be told what to make men's. It was up to him to be the one who did the telling. If at the same time he could get his hands on one of the learning capsules, the prospect was so dazzling it left him breathless. He slipped out to the boys' workshop back of the garage. When he knocked on the door, Donald opened it two inches and quickly tried to close it again. <laughs> Fuck you again. Fuck, is that guy. Creep? Oh, God. Fuck. It's our teacher. <laughs> but Elvin thrust his hand over the latch. Owie, he's going to get his hand slammed. Who cares? He has it coming. He does. Quit trying to grab teens. He does, yeah. You grab a teen, your hand gets slammed. <laughs> exactly. No, Donald, he said sternly. This time you don't get away with it. You see, I know what happened when you ate the spheres. The door creaked open. Elvin walked into the workshop, where all 30 of the 10th graders were gathered around the littered work table. The rocket was there, and they were studying on a tiny monitor. I mean, 10th graders are so young. Yes. Yeah, yeah I know. That is very young. It's a weird, yeah. it's a weird age group. To... I was 14 turning 15. Yeah. Uh, well, let me take that sentence again. I misread, misread something. The rocket was there, and they were studying the tiny motor, not monitor. Yeah. In a corner was a hastily constructed forge. Three girls were working with it, turning out curved strips of metal, which a boy... Just like the curve of their body. <laughs> yeah, that's nice, that's nice. Which a boy was machining on the metal lathe. Yeah, he, yeah, was. he was. machining it. In the center of the <laughs> shop was a... take a, a bath. Mm-hmm. Was babe, it babe. tall? <laughs> In the center of the shop was a tall, gleaming bar of metal, <laughs> surrounded by a network of wires and fastened to a wooden base made oh. from an orange crate. You're cooking up some more surprises for us? Elvin asked. No, Donald replied solemnly. We're ashamed of, as indeed. Our bodies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't be. I'll teach you why. <laughs> we are all sexual beings. We've all got them. You want to see mine? Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. Get no, out no. of here. As indeed you should be. We're doing our best to put everything back the way it was, Mabel Travis said. Honestly, Mr. Elvin. It won't help much. The damage is already done. But it can be undone. We've already fixed up part of it. 
Yes, David Shermerhorn cut in anxiously. When Don and I came back this morning, the first thing we did was bring back the bank. Our machine's kind of crude, Mr. Elvin, so we couldn't get it right at first. I guess we picked up a castle or something in between. But that's all right oh, now. I was explaining so, like, yeah, these we things get we it. Know. Yeah, we understood. And the gold, well, we're going to turn it back to gravel again tonight. He gestured toward the bar of metal. We can work from the edge of our field, David pointed out. The whole desert will change at once, the way it did last night. And what will you do with all the people on it? It won't hurt them. But then when they find out their gold is gravel, you'll have a major catastrophe on your hands. No, because there, there will be no one to answer as to why. And they'll just be like, I don't know. I guess I'll just go home. Yeah, exactly. What are they going to do? I do think they'd freak out. They'd probably they probably freak, freak out. out. But big deal. Yeah. The world is falling apart. Yeah, just do it Christ. anyway. War has started in Europe. That's, yeah. that's a bad sign. A European war. <laughs> Maryland bitter lip. That's why Hot. We... <laughs> Too sexy. Fuck. Fuck. This is like Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> That's why we haven't done anything yet. We don't want anybody to get hurt, but... So you've considered that at last. The more Elvin rubbed in the guilt, he reasoned, the more secure he would make himself. What a fucking... Yeah, what a he piece really of shit. did turn Handling into that so character from Love Story yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah, just a vindictive monster. Mm-hmm. I guess we should have picked up on that from the fact that he gave them this 10-page yeah. te- quiz because he thought they pranked him yeah. mildly Revenge over the weekend. Quiz. When, like, yeah, he somehow gotten in his head... That he pranked them and then was mad that they pranked him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even though he knows full well that's not what he took place. saw a fucking spaceship. <laughs> He's like losing his goddamn mind. He's like, please, Chris. <laughs> we could just transpose the whole area, Charles suggested. We've considered that too. Maybe in pieces, Mr. Elvin. You know, an acre or two to Australia, oh. another to Germany, another to okay England. Is that okay with you? Don't do this. <laughs> that couldn't cause much more than local riots. <laughs> the, oh, no. fair. Well, you yeah. Know. yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I guess if we've got a limit to that. But the men would be mighty uncomfortable for a while. <laughs> the only trouble is our machines are we so... We can't transport penises. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing we haven't figured out. <laughs> They're so mysterious. <laughs> the only trouble is our machines are so crude, we've had to build them out of scraps. And something could go wrong. We might try to send some of the mob to China and end up putting them in the Pacific. Or maybe back in time. You've done enough tampering, Elvin declared. I won't help you at all unless you promise to leave everything as it is. Why do they need his help? What? They, he they do not need his help. Eaten he hasn't shit yet. He, he hasn't eaten know. any yeah. of the spheres. He doesn't. He is not nearly as smart as they are. I hate this. I he doesn't hate know what he's Elvin. talking about. And so his argument is leave it and let the world burn. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what he's. I, at least they're trying to come up with solutions. They're yeah. making an effort, and you're just the fucking weird. 36 year old who lurks around trying to peep in their window <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't help you at all unless you promise to leave everything as it is you have to put yourselves in a position to help the world not destroy it that's what they're doing Elvin had injected just the right tone of nobility into his voice <laughs> I, I don't think he can even imagine what that sounds yes. like <laughs> he's like, he's like using not, a British accent he's, he's like yeah I think I injected the right tone of nobility when actually he sounded like you can't you leave it before you put do yourselves more. in a position to help the world, not act, not hurt it. He's like, oh, wow, God. I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Elvin had injected just the right tone of nobility into his voice. The thirty adolescents consulted together in whispers. Then David asked, "What do you want us to do, Mister Elvin?" Why are they listening to him? Let me ask as your rep. <laughs> oh God, this if they fucking follow this oh, thread. No. Let me act as your representative. I'll go to Washington and talk what? to the responsible uh, men in the government. I can't. The responsible no! men in the government. He's their liaison. I can't follow. This is a bad I, idea. I don't want to watch. I don't want to read. Eat a gumball, dum dum. Mr. Elvin goes to Washington. He's going to be such a fucking <laughs> awful I, coded. I can't. Horrible story. <laughs> I'll try to see the president himself. We should set Good up luck a, with that, buddy. We should set up a scientific foundation for you where you'll have the equipment you need and where your experiments won't do the rest of us any harm. But mm. if I'm to convince anybody, I'm going to have to do some tall talking. If you had one of the capsules left... No, Mr. Elvin, they're all gone. David was not looking at him, and Elvin knew he was lying. Yeah. This is not Don't the, fucking give him no, a capsule. At least they yeah. know that. But this was not the occasion to make an issue of it. Above everything else, he had to see to it that they had complete faith in his motives. Then one of your what mach- the fuck are his motives? I then? don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So plaintive. I don't. We've been reading this story <laughs> for, for years now. Ten years. 
We all have long beards. Brett isn't even trying to be a lifeguard anymore. Brett's a skeleton now. <laughs> he left. <laughs> His body. <laughs> Then one of your machines, he suggested. I have to make them understand I'm not a crank. So this guy's plan is to go to Washington holding a machine and just get, like, a meeting with the president? Is he just, like, wanting the Medal of Freedom? Like, what's he his end game? He's going to get killed by Secret Service. That's exactly what's going to happen. You bring some, you bring a fucking giant device, like some weird <laughs> to, me- to the lawn of the White House. Yeah, yeah. mechanical device. Look You're going to gun I down. Have. Teenagers made this. <laughs> <laughs> And Trump is like, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. That sounds sensible. Which one, Mr. Elvin? The degravitational unit is the smallest and it would do the least harm if... David looked away again. If it got out of your hands. It isn't sensational enough. I rather wanted to show them this thing you used to transpose the bank and a square of jungle. Why? What? Oh, wait. What? Oh, no, Marilyn broke in. We what? couldn't. What is his... Endgame. I think he's like, going to kill these kids. <laughs> but, like, I don't know why. <laughs> like, <laughs> why? What is he dreaming up? Like, like gold is already the has world no is value fucked. now. If he does that, like, tigers came out of the fucking air. <laughs> like, what? So then he's, he's just like, a murderer? I'm going to make myself some gems. <laughs> he's going to fucking. I'm going gonna... to make myself the hottest teen of all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll absorb their teen power if I kill them. <laughs> I want to be buxom. <laughs> oh, no, Marilyn broke in. We couldn't. Why that, Mr. Elvin? I've already told you. It's the sort of thing that would attract the attention of the important officials immediately because it could be converted so readily to a weapon of inestimable value. In- inestimable value. There was a long silence. The well, least motivating thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the long silence like, is them uh, being like, Yeah, uh, that's why we're uh, not going to give it to you. Yeah, and also the anti gravitational boots couldn't that be turned into a weapon. That seems pretty. You could, you could crazier. totally like ungravity your opponents, and then they would yeah, be go in the Oval Office, mm-hmm. flip it on, everybody floats, and they're like, "Yep, checks out. That thing's crazy." Yeah. yeah. There was a long silence while the thirty youngsters looked from one to the other. It lengthened. Elvin felt a creeping edge of fear. David spoke at last. I think you're right, Mister Elvin. <laughs> Fucking David. We could show the world how to build a society. muscles. This is one of those, this whole thing is just like, it's Irving E. Cox, like his avatar in the story is like the guy who in the end turns out to be like, he's, you know what? We were wrong about him. He is smart. We like him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We've really turned around on this. We see the error of our ways. You're smart, Mr. Irvin. I mean, Elvin. (laughs) (laughs) We're watching him like play The Sims. Yeah, <laughs> he's like named all of his students right we could show the world how to build a society adjusted to the needs of man we could develop techniques for wiping out disease and mental disorders we could show you how to conserve our resources how to build material things for the mutual happiness of all people how to create instead of destroying yeah blah 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 why are they so long winded I don't know everyone's got to have a fucking monologue but of course you're right the only thing that would really interest any of us would be a new weapon wouldn't it All right, we'll give it to you no. Huh? <laughs> Don't. Wait, what? Why is that the I, next I, thought? Well, it sounds like they see through him. I think they're lying to him. There's their they're lying like, to him. Oh, yeah, sure. we could do all of these things, but what you're saying is you want a weapon. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, we'll give you we'll a weapon. We'll give you a fucking sure. weapon. They're going to Jumanji him. I hope. <gasps> Yay. <laughs> Marilyn sprang up. But David, I know what I'm doing. But he David! Her. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's a better read. That's, what, that's, what, that's what she I'm sounded just like. like. Like Shit's Creek. <laughs> David! <laughs> I know what I'm doing, he snapped at her in a tense whisper. Turning back to Elvin, he added smoothly, But we'll want something from you first, Mr. Elvin. Anything, my boy. Your virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Your cherry. <laughs> Disgusting. Anything, my boy. Anything to promote the welfare of mankind. But no more of your tricks, mind. But no more of your tricks, mi- oh, no mind. Oh, mind. Yeah. mind. No more of your tricks, mind. This is far from a Mind trick, the Mr. Boner. Elvin. Sorry. <laughs> so, so long as that's understood. We're working on a machine, a new one. We have everything we need except tungsten. They use that in building television sets, among other things. I want you to drive down to one of the plants in Los Angeles and get us a pound of tungsten. They won't sell it to you. You'll have to steal it. What? Wait, so they're saying they're this to him? They're bamboozling him now. Totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to, like, nuke that 
plant that he goes to or something. Right. You're gonna like open up a hole, he's gonna walk through it and suddenly be in space. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna turn into one big ice cube. You know, <laughs> also knowing this author, this could just turn into yeah. a tungsten heist. We're just we're yeah, just who gonna knows? see him, yeah. Who knows? All of a sudden it's Tungsten. We're in a heist yeah. story. Yes. What? To steal something that we like a, a, a heavy Vaguely, metal we kind yeah. of understand. <laughs> now, David, only a thick skulled schoolboy would take such an unsocial attitude. I'm a teacher, a responsible citizen, proud. <laughs> Do you want the machine for transposing matter? Yes, for the good of the nation, but then you'll have to take this risk. We'll give you a degravitational unit. That'll help you get away. When you bring us the tungsten, we'll deliver the transportation machine. Elvin made the drive to Los Angeles in record time. <laughs> oh, good for him. That's good for him. He wanted to good for him. him. Good for him. The highway was jammed God with bless. traffic, but all of it was moving in the but opposite he was direction. So hot and could not be stopped by traffic. Yeah. <laughs> Towards San Benedicto. He refused to think of the consequences if he were caught. The glittering de- dream. You know what? I think the world's on fire. They're not going to be super No one gives a shit about his stupid about tungsten your- heist. <laughs> yeah. He's totally stealing like a metric ton of Wait, tungsten. We were going to base our new missing. world economy on <laughs> tungsten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I lost my play. Oh, here we go. Uh, if they refused him, the glittering dream was was still blazing on the horizon of his mind. If they refused what him the dream? learning capsule, it was unfortunate, but there was nothing he could do about it. The important machine was the one that transposed matter through time. I think that's his dream. He wants the, the okay. matter machine. And with basically, that, they understand that it. he's like. He's evil, and if they gave him right a bunch of intelligence, he would do evil things with it. I think so. Yeah. yeah. With that one device alone, Elvin could sway the world. Yep. Placed in the scales against such a reward, the moral issue of theft counted not at all. Yeah, Wait, he wants to be, care about this. He wants to be <gasps> dictator of Earth. I yeah. think. Yeah. Also, yeah, I think he does. He wants too. to be Mr. Elvin of Earth. Also, he's got a weird moral code. If he's like all right with just like ogling teens, I know, his but whole refuses waking life. property crime. But yeah, <laughs> Los Angeles whirled chaotically in the monetary crisis. The streets were jammed with people buying everything they could before prices jumped again. That they'd be, they're already, whatever. Sure. <laughs> Making me die. God, this is fucking the worst. <laughs> in the confusion, Elvin had no difficulty baking, breaking into a television plant. He didn't trip a burglar alarm until it, are television He's manufacturing plants. Mary plans? Sue. What is this? Yeah, exactly. He's, I, I like yeah. whispered that to myself. Oh, you did? <laughs> when you said uh, he's playing The Sims. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a Mary he's Sue. A Mary Sue for also, sure. I know that the economy has changed yeah, over the uh-huh. years, but was there was there ever heavy manufacturing in downtown Los Angeles? Was there ever like a Zenith plant? Like they were just assembling Maybe. TVs? I don't know. I don't know. Aren't there some like weird factories out um, like in the past the arts district? Yeah, like in Vernon, there's like that yeah. whole district where there's a, all this industrial stuff. I guess, I guess that's not. But here's I'm the no thing. Mr. Elvin, so I will yeah. admit that I do not know enough to say. Look, mm. this is not. A, this is the wrong thing for me to dwell on in this Here's story. Here's the thing: this, this is the hill that you will die on. Where yeah, there, is this plant? <laughs> there are more. There are bigger problems with this narrative. <laughs> yeah. In the confusion, now Elvin had no difficulty breaking into a television plant. He didn't trip a burglar alarm until he was leaving t- the factory, but the degravitational unit made his escape easy. So we did have a fucking yeah, tungsten heist. Within four hours, he was back in San Benedicto. <laughs> why do we have this why fucking is this tungsten happening? plot? Can we please just have him be like, he got the tungsten? It bet I, hopefully when he gets back, it's like they've been up to a whole bunch of shit and it was just a giant distraction. I hope so. Yeah, they, I hope so. That's, yeah, that's where this is going. He hurried to the workshop, but when he pounded on the door. Pound, pound, pound. There was no response. He tried the latch, and the door swung open. Fucking duh! What a piece of shit! Of course they're trying to get rid of him. The room was empty, but on the table was a large envelope addressed to him. Ah, the Dear John letter. Yeah. A, th- a thin thread of wire was fastened to it. As he oh. picked it up, the wire broke, and somewhere in the distance, a motor began to hum. Hell yeah. What? Kill this Hell guy. Yeah. Oh my god. Dear Mr. Elvin, he read, it was unkind of us to play another trick on you. But we're sure you'll be clever enough to steal the tungsten without getting caught. When you came in to talk to us, we realized that the conclusion we had reached was right. Children, adolescent minds, have wrecked our world. No! No! Oh, oh my this sucks. God! Oh my God. Is that the end? No, it keeps going. I thought it was going to be like, we've realized... 
only children are pure enough right. yeah. to children run the, the world. No, no, that's oh, not it at all. Oh, God, I'm so angry. I was I, right. I can crush every single one of these halls cough drops between <laughs> my fingers. I'm so mad. Uh, it was the no good teens all along. They, they finally uh, realized it. Disgusting. Gang, Scooby gang. You know all about that. Mr. Elvin, teachers always do. Oh my God! <laughs> you, uh, you, you were always right, Mr. This Elvin. Is this is the exact same, same thing. It it is. Is. Exact same I want to read everything this asshole wrote and see if it's just always like this. Like women are wrong, and I was right. Kids are wrong, and I was right. Like yeah. what yeah. else is there? And it's always be? like a representative of the group that agrees. Yes. Right. That's like you know what. You were right about yeah. us all along. Yeah. It's so stupid. Well, guy, he, you know, Irving e. Cox, he found a formula that. Didn't work, but he kept <laughs> going so back to it. And so stuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> if it's broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and you've told us so often in class about the unstable emotions of adolescence. This letter's too long. Their tantrums, their unpredictability, their unsocial behavior, their egocentricity, and all the rest. Shut the fuck up. We'd like to help, but there isn't much we can do. Not really. You just want the machines we know how to make, not the ideas we've learned. We grew up, you see, on the day we turned the desert to gold. We found out what happens when you give children dangerous toys to play with. I can't do this. Okay. I can't do this. Is this because he doesn't want to get his kid a BB gun or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. It's like, no, you can't borrow the car. I'm going to write a story. Yeah. <laughs> This is a, he. The kid thought he was getting uh, like a fucking Atari twenty six hundred, and then he opened yeah. it up, and it was just the, this manuscript. <laughs> oh Read my this and god! Learn. <laughs> he would totally do that. Yeah. It's like if I ran the world, Dad, it'd be a lot better. That's what you think. Yeah. And then he like disappears in his study for <laughs> three hours, and then everybody in the living room is like, "Fuck, God, yeah, you did it again." And they're like, "Mom, you were right. We should never ask for anything." She was like, "You don't even want to read the story." He wrote. <laughs> After I said I wanted to watch one soap opera. <laughs> we made our mistake and we know how to straighten it out. We've only waited for you to read this so that you would understand, at least for a moment. We have isolated ourselves in suspended time. Hmm. We're right here in the workshop with you, but hmm. you can't see us naturally. <laughs> because we started standing still in time more than an hour ago. When you opened your envelope, you tripped the motor of a matter transportation. Matter transposition machine, which will throw all time backward to last Friday night. None of this will have happened then. This should straighten everything out, don't you think? You'll find the rocket again and you'll open it, just as you did before. No. But this time, there no. will only be a jar of bubble gum inside, oh, because okay. we've already consumed the learning capsules. But the, if you do, <laughs> no, rewind this time. He doesn't quite this understand how this he's time. He's never seen Looper. Whatever. He doesn't know how this works. He doesn't quite get it. Because we've already consumed the learning capsules, there won't be any memory left for anyone. Except ours. We've learned how to work with a planet of adolescence. We think we can help you mature in spite of yourselves. Okay. But this time, no one will ever know how it is being done. Elvin looked up, but before the anger and frustration could crystallize in his mind, the yellow lamp dimmed, the walls of the workshop faded and vanished. He fought for a moment against the blackness rising in his mind. The light paled and paled, and finally it was nothing more than a red streak in the sky. It moved closer and he saw that it was a falling object followed by a long plume of red flame. Hmm. It flashed momentarily overhead, and Elvin heard a dull thud as it fell into a field beyond the ranch house. He sprang up from the couch and moved off in the darkness. It had been a meteorite, of course. If it had survived the friction of the atmosphere, it would make an interesting exhibit for the science classroom. The end. Rate this book. One star. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Ugh. Um, it sort of redeemed itself. Uh, I didn't mind I, the I didn't mind the very last paragraph. Yes. Yeah, I didn't mind them going off and doing their own planet. And it's then, like, yeah, we understand that you would fuck us all over, so we're just going to slowly help you evolve. Yeah, right. Uh, that was I mean that was fucking terrible. Though. That was oh, really yeah, fucking no, really terrible. Bad. Really fucking bad. Also, a pedophile's dream. The teens became younger at the end of the story. <laughs> right. Even by just a week, it's so oh, much so hotter. hotter. It's yeah. so, so much hotter. hotter. So, much hotter. Like, so much happens in a week. Teens' hotness just like depreciates so so quickly. quick. It's like a Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, like cottage cheese and yeah. room temperature. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck um, this fucking I asshole. really hated the story. Yeah. I really hate Irving Cox. A real a real pile of shit to, uh, for the last yeah. episode. So well done, yeah. Brett. Yeah, yeah thank good you so work, much, Brett. You have Classic Brett. Good Outdone work. yourself. Yes. Um, um, if any story were good to go out on, 
it's it's this one. It's this one for sure. It's this one with this guest. Yeah, you're yeah, a, you're a sure. skeleton in Tommy Bahama up on a lifeguard tower. But yep. you did good work today. Yeah, your your bones smile upon us on this day. <laughs> um, we hope your spirit looks up. Uh, oh, from to hell. us from below. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely in hell. Yeah, okay, you're burning you're in hell. Sure in hell. hell definitely. Along with Irving. Yeah. Cox. Um, Tell him hi and then punch him in the <laughs> fucking dick. Yeah. And then he'll write a story about yeah. how you were wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then you'll eventually be you'll like, you know, I was really dicks wrong. Are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I hated the story. Uh huh. Um, but thank you so much for coming on and doing yeah, the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is a, such a fun show to do. It's such a funny concept. And, and the two of you are, are great. I'm glad your other show is, is uh, I'm glad Teen Creeps is, is the institution is continuing. Uh, yes. And I'm glad that this show is continuing in some form. And hopefully I'm, I'm excited for when it crops up in the pre- Patreon again. Thank oh, you. So, thank uh, you so much. So yeah, this is a, a blast to do. Uh, 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 and, um, and thanks for having me on this, this last episode. It, it's been so fun to guest on. So thank Aww, you. Thank you. Really We're so it. happy to have you. You. Yeah, and uh, the first person we thought of. Oh, mm-hmm. God bless you. And, well, I would, and God bless you. I was, you. The, I was you know the second what? after Irving E. Cox. Yeah. <laughs> first person you thought of was like, we need the really the worst author we can possibly imagine. No, we don't know what story. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That was all Brett. All, that the was pu- all Brett. Puppet after master we Brett. chose you. Yeah. And Brett was like, yeah, another Irving E. Cox story. <laughs> That's what Brett sounds like, yeah. by the way. He <laughs> cracked his knuckles for Name two Brett. hours straight. <laughs> and Brett, I love Cammy Bahama. We've got the Irving E. Cox of podcasters as our guests. I was like, wait a minute, that's what you think of me? Jesus Christ. I don't like what energy I've been projecting. The Irving E. Cox of producers, Brett. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I can't even joke about that. I can't even joke about that. In a true, um, uh, like, to be sincere, mm-hmm. um, we have really loved doing this show. Yes. Um, and it has been really fun. And we are, it is a bittersweet thing to end this show. Yes. Um, but it, like we've said before, it still will live on occasionally in the Patreon and mm-hmm. as live shows. And perhaps um, we'll pop back in. Yeah, yeah. When we're less busy as humans. Yeah. And so thank you guys so much for listening. We really do appreciate it. And for your support. And for being so kind when we announced that uh, yeah. the show was going to be ending. It's really nice. Um, and, and huge thanks to uh, Brett. Thank you, We always Brett. give you shit on this show. Brett is like one of the nicest people I've ever met. Truly, yeah. truly. Um, the nicest solemn mime to ever grace this studio. <laughs> um, and we really appreciate uh, all the work that you put into this podcast. Yes, thank you. Um, he just, uh, his bones like fell over and like gave me a thumbs up. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> it's like the end of Terminator 2. It was awesome. <laughs> I uh, guess that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it feels weird to have it be it. Uh, I know. We've been doing this for, you know, almost a year's. This is our 50th episode. Almost a year, yeah. Coming up on it. Yeah. Um, but we're still around. We're still kicking. Um, and listen to Teen Creeps. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> because that's why we're quitting this show, to make that <laughs> show better. So, um I guess so. Yeah, I was just going to yeah. say you can follow us, but yeah, I mean, we're, yeah. whatever. Just yeah, g- catch us on Teen Creeps. We appreciate you having listened, and we hope you will continue to in that form. Yeah, yeah. If there's any listeners of the show who have not checked out Teen Creeps, check it out. It's it's great. Aww, thank you. Thank Nick. you. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to plug, Nick? Uh, boy, just check out a uh, Doughboys, the podcast about uh, chain restaurants that uh, won't die. Uh, Never. Just, yeah, just, <laughs> can't, we can't kill it off. I thought we were killing them. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that the me, me and uh, Mike Mitchell we review uh, different uh, sit down and fast food restaurants every week. It's a great podcast. A you guys podcast. have had me and Kelly on a couple of times. We sure have. You guys yeah. want to jump? Wonderful. You guys want to jumping on point as soup plantation? Soupy P. Yeah. 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 Um. Uh, great place that has food that doesn't taste good yeah um so yeah check that out <laughs> <laughs> it's great though like yeah the food's I love, not good but it's i good. love soup plantation I, and it's very mediocre the food does not taste good but i like it yes right that's okay. that's my defense listen of, to the episode you'll get you'll that get it. you'll get it you'll get it if you listen life. to it you will understand yes. <laughs> and if you want if you came to this podcast and you weren't a Teen Creeps listener, you can check out uh Nick's episode of Teen Creeps. We read Jay's journal, which is like oh, the, yeah. the boy male version of Go Ask Alice. It was very 
very weird. My, very I dumb. tell you, I they complained about that book, but man, so much better than this. Oh yeah, we, just read. we were yeah. so fucking stupid when we were complaining about that book. We didn't even yeah. know. We did not right. know what could exist, how bad it could get. Yeah, um, but. That I closes think, it. That yeah, ends it. I think we keep putting off ending the episode. I know, because it means Even though it was 12,000 years long. But <laughs> thank you so much again. We're all still going to be here. Yeah, we'll still be here. Yeah, and keep it cultured. Forever <laughs> Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts,